yes. <laughs> Hey Joe, thank you so much. Um, it's great to have you on here. I'm really excited to speak to you and learn more about your journey through the past few years. I feel like, yeah, so I saw you briefly at Noisily Festival and we had a little conversation about, um, yeah, what you've been going through really, but obviously specifically about plant medicines and your mm. process into and through and yeah, on the other side of that. Yes, but getting spat out the other side as well. <laughs> yeah it's quite a quick conversation wasn't it but i remember just being fast power something when you just like connect with someone and you just everything you kind of say like oh you, you got that too okay yeah yeah and it just yeah it was you know so like fun. six months in like a two two minute conversation you're all like oh, all right yeah we've been through similar things yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, know, it's funny. I was reflecting on it just been like it was just like boom 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 but yeah. like, there's like more to explore as well you know yeah and sometimes in life you have to try to like speak but that was like literally you caught me just after playing some music and I just like said something you're like oh yeah and I was like oh yeah and that and I didn't even think it just came out like without even thinking and we were just like fully flowing which is always good oh, God, yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes it feels bigger than you and you're connecting to someone so easily and it's just like flowing through and everything you're saying and everything they're saying is correlating and making sense and synchronizing it's like okay we may not be meant to meet yes it's like the dance yeah, yeah. but it's cool because I met you in 2020 I yeah. remember with you were playing Hamper and Love Jam or some one of those ones, I think. And mm -hmm. then it's been a while and I kind of have stepped away a bit and I did a bit of traveling. So it's cool to come and like re, you know, re meet. Mm. And... Yeah, it's funny that, isn't it? Always, uh, yeah, it's nice to just drop back in and then see people. And you can literally see in people's eyes how much they've like kind of gone through since you last saw them. It's amazing. Yeah. So true. But then you still have that same core essence that you'll always have. So it's good to connect again always and just be reminded, you know where we've been where we're going together yeah, yeah it's, it's funny and life always brings the same people like I went to noise this weekend and some of my best mates who I wanted to see I didn't bump into them once and then other people like yourself I bumped into like 10 times so it's like it's sometimes weird like you meet who you're meant to meet and you don't meet the ones who maybe you wanted to meet but the universe is like no nah, not this weekend you don't need that it's weird it's always funny like synchronicities and what flows mm, the serendipity love that yeah mm. Just being open to it and just seeing what comes. Yeah, and not too attached. Yeah. Yeah, like I had a good time at Noisy this weekend for the reason why I, I I had a few slots to perform, which were great. I loved them. But the improvisational jams, which just like came out of nowhere with like people, which I would never have expected, like just randomly, just that was like some of the best moments of the whole thing. And it's that, right. those are the things you couldn't have written or planned or anything. It's just like, that's the magic. Like you put people yeah. together with creatives and yeah. see what happens. I totally agree. Like it was the improvised jams. They were just yeah. like, whoa. Mm -hmm. so that's the realness, isn't it? I think that's where like people really like, come into that essence of just being like we're in this together in the moment and, and yeah people are just like sharing that co-creation that's yeah. what I love about festivals it's epic yeah so yeah that, that was the thing that, is that reminder like yes this is like this is it you know <laughs> mm, especially at Noisley because there's so many creatives there it's it's not the biggest festival in the UK but it's definitely like a well put together festival and like seems to attract lots of very creative people and I've always met many people who are very like-minded and just like bounced off ideas and co-created amazing experiences like easily because there's so many people who are just loving what they're doing there and just just flowing with each other it's lovely yeah I love that. It's just like a noisily plug. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay, so, um, yeah, I like to just take a few deep breaths in before we begin, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, if you want to just share how you're feeling now, where you are now. Um, I'm pretty good. I'm 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 in a good chapter of life of like grounding right now. Um, and after noisily, I come back to a home, which is new to me because I never used to have that. I was always traveling. 
And right now I've got a home and two cats at home and a beautiful partner. And it's just like really, I'm just working on this grounding feeling right now, just like kind of like putting my roots down. And it's uh and I'm feeling like really held in that. So that's beautiful. Um and just yeah, happy to be here. I have uh curiosity to be here today because I I don't know, I'm open to whatever. I, I'm just interested in seeing what might be coming through today through me through you through this inst- uh, for ex- this experience but yeah completely just uh quite relaxed how about you how are you feeling amazing yeah the grounding i've totally resonated i feel like i've been doing that for the past year and a bit and mm-hmm. but like in a way that i've never felt before and, mm-hmm. and same i've done a lot of traveling mm-hmm. but how now, old are you uh how old yeah uh, 34 Okay, yeah, I've just come into 30 this year. So I, I don't know, everyone talks about Saturn return and it for me it felt like I'm coming into the landing period of like what's yeah. been a pretty trauma not traumatic all the time, amazing, but like like what's that word in the plane? Turmoil or whatever. Like there's like bumpy bits, like it's like quite like of a hectic journey. And now I feel like I'm like landing into like some sort of like peace. Yeah. It's interesting <laughs> actually that you say that. I feel like, yeah. Um I, if you when you phrase it like that, like the twenties. Um, yeah yeah that makes sense <laughs> yeah and uh like i don't know it just feels like cycles seven year cycles and stuff like that but it definitely mm-hmm. feels like i'm landing into like a new mm-hmm. version of myself which i didn't even know was possible and like it's it's nice to like kind of always recycle into a new version of like oh wow just shed a layer and like i'm i'm in a new stage of of yeah. being who i thought i could be and uh yeah, yeah. But I, you know what, as well, I think it's sometimes the relationship, when you can have a relationship with stability, that also brings this peace that like I've never experienced before. Mm, that's so true. Yeah, I have to give a lot of credit to my partner. She's like massively like solid for me. Um, and yeah. it's something I've not experienced actually for a while in the partnership, which is just someone like completely there to support you, even when you're not really feeling your best. And like them just always being that anchor. And it's weird. It's like, when they're then not feeling the best it's like we just it, like easily switch and it's like all right now I feel it I can hold you now it's like and yeah. sometimes like, last week sometimes that's hours it's like it just the, the roles of like holding each other is, I don't know that healing through the partnership is massive yeah and actually like feeling that support of the motherly fatherly connection within each other's relationship and mm. supporting each other in that like it's massive yeah definitely I've tried both doing it by myself and I do seem to get distracted because then I'm I'm looking for things to fill the void and actually when you've got someone who's there with you who like shows up every day and loves you you can kind of face your demons together and it's kind of like not so scary and you kind of start to like really process things in a in a team which is something that's actually quite new to me as well like really believing that someone's got my back and then also like having theirs when they need me and showing up even if I want to go outside and just relax and they're actually going through a process I don't know in the past that would have been a chore to me whereas like recently I'm really seeing it as this like Wow. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful connection to be exploring and like supporting with each other because it's so easy and especially for me as a man to take that from others and to give it back when I when someone needs me as well like but yeah it's just showing up for each other I think and when yeah when I get that from someone all the time I feel super solid and then when they're going through it I'm like oh yeah I'm fine because you've been so good to me to help me to feel so solid that now I can like fully support you in this it's amazing mm, I love that it's so cool yeah but it's interesting because i i've been thinking this lately and it's interesting you said like when you're a single for example it's like something like to fill the void but it's not necessarily that like i don't know i've just been reflecting lately that sometimes even if you've like really got loads of self-love for yourself when you're single it's like a whole different energy and it's there's so many distractions Mm. and so many like it's like this energy that's constantly like oh this person is a possibility do you know what i mean oh yeah, yeah yeah weird and it's like constant like movement yeah in a partnership it's like it's just stay this is like a stable thing that I just feel like I hadn't experienced before you know Mm -hmm. yeah and I think it also affects how people experience you and then also how they kind of perceive you like for example like if I'm single and I'm in a noisy experience festival environment like I'm kind of open and my energy is open and people can feel that and it's like therefore I'm kind of looking for anything that's coming my way uh, and that could be a partnership that could be experiences because I've got nothing to lose I'm here to be free and it's like yeah that can sometimes actually be quite scary and intimidating for example if I'm talking to some uh, woman who's with her boyfriend or something and he might feel intimidated by the fact that he can literally feel my energy is open and looking yes. and like he, he I, it doesn't even need to be said yes. but you can then feel that I'm like that and his girlfriend might even pick up on that and if there's any insecurities within that relationship 
he might go into, oh, I'm scared of you, lockdown, no trust, no relationship. It's just not, not a very interesting or fun experience. It's kind of like shutting down. Yeah. Whereas when I've got a girlfriend, and that's what I'm like here to show, like kind mm. of show you, you can feel my energy is like not at all like looking or yeah. wanting for that. So I always find that I connect so much deeper with people, especially women, because they feel safe to talk to me and then their boyfriends as well. And like the, the relationships I seem to develop when I'm with a partner for me is like mm-hmm. so much more wholesome and, and deep because people trust me. Whereas like when I'm single, I do find find that I struggle to get that same level of trust with everyone because I, I yeah. and I get I, I can I, I can even feel that when I'm with my partner yeah. and I can sort of see people yeah and it's not a problem it's just that you're you've made a choice to like, be free and open and yeah. I can feel that energy and it's not yeah. necessarily what is making me and my partner feel comfortable because we're not in yeah. that school. but yeah. it's all right I mean, it's just an interesting thing you merge with that at festivals all the time but yeah. I do know that I I have a better time and make more yeah. friends when I'm with a partner yeah I mean, it makes sense, but, and I totally feel that as well. Like, I feel like I remember it from when I was single and now I can sometimes, I can still tune into it. I can feel other people's like, Mm. it's just a whole different, it's just a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to know about sexual energy as well. That's something that I've heard about myself and heard about friends of mine, leaky sexual energy, and then actually seen it in my own relationships in the past and kind of be like, yeah, actually, I think they kind of did have quite leaky sexual energy, which made me feel really unsafe and therefore started to make me kind of act out and feel jealous all the time and stuff like this. Whereas like, again, current partner that I'm with now, I don't get that at all. She's constantly reassuring me and just like, I'm never going to make you feel like that. And if I ever felt that from anyone else, I wouldn't allow it in my space at all because I would never want to make you feel uncomfortable because we're a team. And it's like that sort of support is just like ridiculous. Even if she's not even with me and she's back at the tent or the van or whatever and I'm out by myself and I'm still experiencing life people can still feel that energy that I'm with someone else because it's just like that's what you Mm -hmm. carry it's it's an interesting thing for sure but that's if you're truthful and your intention is that and that's what you want and you you want it to be that because you could obviously be saying one thing to one person and then doing another which I've also done in the past and not always been so clear on my intentions but yeah recently I've I've known how important it is to be truthful with this partner and how important I need this family structure that I'm now trying to recreate for myself that I've had in the past and yeah, yeah that starts with a team I think it's not yeah you can't known so and it's like trust which is the hardest thing I sometimes to yeah to build on, I think isn't it yeah yeah definitely but people feel it if they if when I've noticed like with even this weekend annoyingly even some friends that I knew from the past I've connected deeper with them this weekend because my level of trust for myself and my partnership is so strong right now that they can probably feel that and like tap into that and be like oh Joe's open to like let me in and like and we can go deeper and stuff like that I don't know it's just an interesting thing when I'm lonely and I'm traveling by myself, I can sometimes be a bit guarded as well. Mm. Not so able to just openly express where I'm at because it's kind of like, oh, I've got to be the best version of myself and not show any of my weaknesses and, and all that. Whereas I'm, when in a relationship, I can relax into all that because I'm like, I don't need to be perfect, actually. I'm working on it. I've got somebody mm. to help me do it. Like, it's like, it's ongoing. It's cool. It sounds like it's been quite transformative, the relationship. It's amazing. Mm, I actually met Alana at last noisily a year ago as well so it's all kind oh, of interesting oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> special place so um yeah I feel like the relationship is also kind of like tied into your um journey with plant medicine just from what you were saying mm. but I guess do you want to just start at the beginning like what drew you in how did you start the journey mm. yeah so I mean I'm a musician by trade <laughs> by yeah. heart by soul by everything I am ever since I was a little boy I've wanted to be a drummer and I've done I have done that since I was a little boy so I've done other things like art graphic design at uni but I was always a drummer in bands and then when I finished uni I, I only really went to uni to get in a band and that never worked out so when um I finished and actually got a degree I was kind of surprised and I went traveling and didn't really know what to do at that stage and then I got a hand pan in Bali and then I ended up going to Morocco for a bit and then long story short I landed myself playing music for yoga classes in Sri Lanka because of my drumming background I spent all my life practicing drums and then I got the hand pan and I was able to teach myself and just create music quite flow like flow quite easily with it and I ended up landing the jobs playing music for yoga classes which was like a unique thing so there was no competition and I just ended up making that my lifestyle so I lived in Sri Lanka for like four seasons on and off like six months of the year and just played music and did singing circles and drum workshops and art classes and it was amazing because I could live the best life because there was no limitations of you didn't need any like qualifications or anything over there it was just really easy to do it Uh, and yeah I had a lot of experience through all of that and towards the end of that I got into a relationship with somebody who was into ayahuasca and uh, yeah I ended up getting invited to come play music at one of those retreats and that's already something that I do all the time anyway and it just seemed to blend perfectly I'm the, the sort of person who likes to expand their consciousness 
like and then explore creativity regularly that's what I do all the time for myself and for other people so like I'm constantly doing that anyway so mm-hmm. to go into a space like a ceremony and to be given something which expands my consciousness and then play music is normal for me and actually I feel like it was just it felt so natural it felt like I was just coming home um in the first ceremony the first time I ever sat with the medicine it just told me you are perfect as you are be free I love you and I just wrote a song about that and like the, by the end of the first night I was asked to play music and then from then on I was invited to the ceremonies to offer my hand pan because I think it was a unique sound healing sort of frequency that people really enjoyed and obviously I have so much experience with it already that I was kind of just like ready for it so it was weird I then started an apprenticeship with the medicine and the people who I met in Sri Lanka doing it and kind of learned through them about how to hold space and to kind of like serve medicine for people obviously I was just a musician but I witnessed the whole sort of operation uh, and it was just like an imp- apprenticeship for me because then I started doing it every well at first a couple times a year and then it led to me doing it like a couple times a month um, wow. yeah for like after a two more seasons in Sri Lanka I then came back to England and then started doing it way more regularly in England um which was then yeah more of an experience but even then I was having small doses so like rather than having like full um doses I was having like small amounts and then playing music which is more manageable um and you'd have small amounts through the ceremony so eventually it built up to like a full cup um so you'd feel it really strong and you'd have like visuals and visions and all the same experiences but it's almost like a microdose. you call it like yeah. a homeopathic dose which is kind of what the team are meant to be on so that you can kind of connect together yeah. and tune in and like have just enough to be on the frequency of intuition and everyone flow together but not too much that you just go into your own process and you can't really help anyone else so but because of that it's like it's like you're not you're not like knocked back on your self all the time so you kind of you can handle it and you're like getting on with it and I'm playing music and like and helping people and clearing sick buckets and just it's like you just step into this role of like all right yeah I'm just here to not even be about me now and just like be part of everyone else and obviously when you then play music your ego comes up and it's kind of like get out of the way I'm trying to just play music but yeah sometimes it is better than others but it's just what it is and that's the battle that you go through as a musician to kind of like quiet that voice of just like chat chatter and actually be present and not just express yourself and if you can even not even be thinking about anything and just be in it that's like when you're really truly just fully flowing and people just love it either way I've done so many performances I call performances whatever you want to say like offerings and in my mind my ego is just like that's terrible it's so shit stop playing you're terrible and then I finish it and everyone's just like that was amazing you changed my life and it's just like this is always the process like that's what my process was like it was always showing me my imperfections in my ego and like how much I doubt myself and how low my confidence is even though people may be experiencing it completely different to how I'm experiencing it so it's just always a trip um, so anyway, that went on for a long time and I've learned a lot through doing that. And I've sat with different people now, a couple of uh, different people and, and learned the different styles of how they'd like to do it. But ultimately, I've kind of always just stayed true to what I do, which is rhythm and drumming and the hand pan. And, and that to me, it's, it's, it, the, the medicine inspired me massively and, and it, it, it helped me to create music. So I did create like a medicine EP with songs on the guitar and stuff like this. And I'm always evolving as an artist. So yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. And then how I got out of it was kind of, Last year, about a year ago, year and three months, I broke my wrist um, and I had to have an operation on my wrist and have a titanium plate put in there. And I was lined up to continue to live this way of living in my van, doing the ceremony regularly for my work. And um, But then, yeah, my wrist broke and I kind of had to rethink. And I feel like for me personally, I've always been a spiritual God, a spiritual person, God, <laughs> I believe in God. And I do believe that we there is something bigger than us all, but we are part of it. And I am a, like a part of that. And therefore I am the creator also. Yes. So it's like yes. A, yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting thing to not like get, let it go to my head, but I, I am aware of my divinity. And I think the medicine yes. has locked that and helped me to like, kind of open my voice even more and like feel so strong within myself. But then breaking my arm was like, it just felt like it was like it's time to go home, Joe. Because like I, I'd been wow. like living away for like seven years, traveling Sri Lanka four years, and then living in my van for like three years. And yeah, I'd almost forgotten where I came from, who I was before, all of that. And like I used to just play music for myself, but in my bedroom all the time, and and be very like a country person with my family nearby. And like, and I just went off and just explored the world and went like fully dived in. And then me breaking my wrist felt like it was just like reeling me back home, just like come home, start again, connect with your family like re- restart from the beginning cut off all these things because you don't need it anymore it's like start like start putting yourself into society start offering your music for people who can maybe receive it who because like if I stay in a ceremony scene the festival world I only reach people who come to that place whereas like what I've really been mm-hmm. receiving now the integration stage which has been hard is like 
go into society, play music for elderly people with dementia, play it for people with like disabilities, go and teach kids in schools. Like this is where you're needed and it's not easy because you've got to go into like the thick of the bullshit of society, which mm. I'm terrified of. But at the same time, it's like you've been trained now and you've got these skills and this ability to hold people and to, to love people and to just give them some like positive vibrations. And it's like exactly what I should be doing now, like to give back. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting process that I'm now on and it's almost like pulling me away from this, the, the medicine and I, and I don't feel like I need it anymore. Really. I don't really want to be doing it anymore because I feel like I'm learning way more and giving way more and receiving way more just mm-hmm. by like actually coming into the thing that I always hated the most, which is society and actually being part of it and showing up for that and like myself and my family and my sister who's had a baby recently and like, like getting a job so I can actually teach kids in schools and and just be part of it because I, I I'm just tired of it and I don't want it to be as shit as it is. But the only thing that I can do is to go into it and to help it from the inside out. I think, and that's the ultimate lesson that the medicine really gave to me. It's just like you've been avoiding. It's like you can't just live on the fringe anymore. You have to like go in. You've got skills to give. You have to go and help people because it's what you've always wanted to do is to help everyone. And you can't just help certain categories of people who can afford it or who like it. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be like full spectrum. I'm here to help everybody, and ultimately that's what the medicine is definitely awoken in me so it's an interesting thing that I leave it and be like I don't need that anymore but I have so much respect and love for what it gave to me and how much it opened me up so yes yeah, I see the good and the bad I've seen good and bad in people and experiences and communities and all of it and I've taken so much from it but ultimately landed back in the place that I came from and mm. I remember who I was before it all began and just like I don't think you'll ever change ultimately you're a fractal of yourself and you might change to learn about different versions of who you thought you were but you'll eventually always come, come back to what you always were mm. and I think it's acceptance of that and that's where I'm at now just like loving myself more than I ever have and having support with my family and my partner and and just by doing that filling my cup so much I can then give it to as many people as possible and that's how I felt like I was at Noisley this weekend I was actually really able to just like offer myself and just give and felt like it was such a pleasure and an honor to do that and just love music because a couple of years ago when I was doing ceremonies full time I fell out of love of music because it became a job and, I, and so it's a long story for me of just like love and, and passion and following that and, and always just needing to kind of re-spark that and find it where it is and ayahuasca the music the medicine it was all part of that for me so mm. yeah there's a long story short <laughs> yeah wow fascinating I love that it's like come full circle again it's like come home Mm. like actually come home you know <laughs> physically come home yeah I was living in a community in Glastonbury and I broke my arm and I had to come home after surgery and my mom and dad literally came and picked me up and like picked my van up and drove it back home and it was just like literally like picking wow. me up and taking me back yeah. so when you were in the van you were like moving around in the UK yeah yeah so that and Wales um so since since the lockdown yeah like two or three years I went from traveling all the time to like just being in England and actually I've been falling in love with England and Wales and yeah. Scotland I, I spent three months of Scotland about six months in Wales and the rest of the time in England and yeah I do, I'm so content now that's another thing that the medicine I think was teaching me because it's interesting because at first I was looking outwards and then you find what you're looking for where you always were it's like I just started to open my eyes to the beauty all around me I live in North Yorkshire and the North Yorkshire Dales are just absolutely profoundly beautiful yeah. I used to travel all the way to Sri Lanka to find like waterfalls and yeah. now I just drive an hour and find them I can surf at Saltburn I think oh. it's just a change of like perspective of just like wow. everything I need is here but yeah. I have to change my perspective and stop like thinking that I need to find it elsewhere or that other people have got it better it's like this is where I'm at this is my this is my yeah. my life and I've got to accept it and make the most out of it so yeah that's the main thing that's been coming through and then just like absolute like profound gratitude of just like I actually wouldn't want to be anywhere else I speak mm. the language I know the people mm. I'm like this is my homeland this is where I want to be my, my, the medicine grows every year in the fields where the cows grow like it's just like it's natural we have our own supply I think that's yeah. the thing that is ultimately been coming through which makes the medicine scene of like ayahuasca seem like it has its place but it's not where I'm meant to be anymore it's like reminded me to come back to what I always was which is that we've forgotten our, our roots, I think, because it was stripped away from us from so many like things that have happened. But yeah, it's hard to say who we are, or our culture, or where we come from, ultimately, and 100 years of just like absolute rubbish, like brainwashing that's been yeah. going. Like It's just like we've forgotten who we were. And I yeah. think like that's what the medicine's been pointing me back to. It's like trust your inner guidance and come back to who you always were and just like do the things you've loved all your life mm. and share it with everyone. And it's just like you are you have got to be authentic. You've got to be real. Mm-hmm. You've got to love yourself and you've got to share it with everybody. That's 
that's it and humble yourself massively Mm -hmm. working with people with dementia and 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 kids and all these people in society just like seeing how people are actually just grafting and they're the most spiritual people I've ever met and it just changes my whole view on what I used to think was like righteous and how I should live my life and just like seeing a whole different side of it it's very humbling Mm. for sure I think breaking my wrist was humbling I thought I might never play music again it was just like it had me on my knees begging for it it was just like yeah it made me realize how important it was and then to give it back in the places that I like Mm. needed the most it's like yeah it's just full circle yeah full circle yeah I totally resonate with a lot of what you said and especially like uh just being content and being content with where you are because I feel like I fell out of love of like the city and I was traveling and I'm going but it's like you have to have that journey that journey where you kind of need to get a bit lost and explore and discover and then coming back and then yeah getting a home and just being like wow I'm so glad that and mm. finding the beauty around it, yeah totally totally mm. right. and also what you said about noisily like just feeling so grateful to share mm-hmm. and to be at that place where you can just finally just like I don't know it felt different as well for me like finally there's nothing weird going on it's this is just it you know <laughs> yeah I'm just me and just here to be me and I don't need to try I think when you start being more raw real you just like it's like the Holy Spirit idea of like, you don't have to worry about what you're going to say. It's going to come through you. If you're honest all the time, it will always just be real. And it's like, that's you. Like, you don't have to worry about it. The moment you start lying, you're make, making up stories that you have to remember all the time and tell people the same thing next week when you they ask you the same question. You're just causing yourself loads of issues. Whereas if you're just honest and true, real, then you just show up, you're there. And it's just like, ah, oh, here yeah. I am. If I'm needed, well, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. Well, like you were saying, that voice that's like, oh my God, it's not good enough, or whatever. It's like, no more. It's like, you can just be now. <laughs> Yeah, it's a funny thing. I've always like found it quite ironic. It's like I've spent most of my the last seven years playing music only for like what I do. And uh, I've always got this voice in my head, like telling me I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm rubbish. I don't know what I'm doing. And I, and then people come up to me and they're like, oh, I really like what you're doing, Joe. Like, thanks for doing that. And, and, and I always have to tell them that it's like it's a weird experience to kind of express it, express it to people. But it's like it's not actually that easy for me to do this. And I know it seems like I'm good at it, but like, it's actually really fucking scary. Like every time. And I'm like massively processing every time. And I'm just yeah. like, Oh, and then afterwards I go into a massive like denial, like hide from everyone. It's like always like so many processes that come up from yeah. doing these things, but yeah, like, totally. it's just like the only thing I can do. So I think that's the yes. thing that I always like trying to help people understand as well. That's the thing that medicine showed me. It's like, I don't think those things will ever go away, but I yeah. learn to love those parts of myself. And yeah. it's just like, yeah it's an interesting thing and then to see that in other people and be like you're not the only one who has those voices he tells you not to yeah. do it like, I've had that my whole life but I just eventually just do it and then, and then yeah. they disappear and then they disappear and then I'm loving yeah. my life and then I'm, yeah and then it will happen again tomorrow like it's always it's just a silly cycle of like forgetting and remembering remembering yes <laughs> but I had the same thing for a very long time when I was in the band like I was telling myself that I was really freaking bad for so long and then people would come up to me like, oh, my God, you're amazing. And I was like, what? I was like so embarrassed. Mm. And then I remember one of the band members at one point said, oh, we should stop saying that to you. Otherwise, you're going to get a big head. And I was thinking to myself, like, no, you should definitely continue. Like, I need to. No, no. Yeah. And that's something you can tell them as well. It's quite a clear communication. But like, I actually really need you to constantly big me up. I might seem like I'm confident, but actually yes. I'm really not. And I need that. And it helps me. Because otherwise, if even in a band situation, you're getting really paranoid and weird situations. Really yeah. band so it can so easily go there. But yeah, I, do, I think one of the main things I focus on, right, especially like recently, and it's something that I've tuned into through many years of playing music for yoga classes. And and like, for example, I used to play and I'd turn up and try and play songs I already knew. And then it didn't work because I didn't enjoy it. I wasn't present. I wasn't being real. And then uh. I started to realize I really need to be in the moment and like improvise if I can so that I can kind of actually be present and making something original right now. So then I'm feeling it and it that kind of gets out mm. that way because otherwise it's not real. Um, so it's always that thing of just like kind of like setting up the best I can by practicing and being on it all the time and staying healthy and fit in my mind and my body, everything. And then when the opportunities come, but there's an opportunity that I'm sat and there's music on my lap, like a hand pan and I can jam. It's like the moment that that's there, it's like now that's the time to let go of all of that and just like actually be present and just see mm. what comes through and listen to what's going around me and see how I can like influence and add my mm. spark and my flair into that in the perfect harmony to create a co-creation. And then 
that's like the thing I'm always trying to express and then also not get attached to what comes out because actually yeah. that's the beauty of it like when yeah. you're a child or when you're expressing and creating without any like judgment of yourself that's when you're truly real and like when you're yes. actually letting it flow and it's like as soon as you start being like is that right is that wrong it's like you're kind of messing with your own flow yeah so 100%. that's the thing just letting it come out and yeah. then not even like judging it and then after yeah. like well that was just what it was like you know, yeah. I, it's I used to uh, I've had partnerships in the past and they've been like oh we should have done that different should have done that I'm like no that's not real that's what came out that was what was meant to come out yeah. like I don't live in that place that you're talking about like I don't know where that is like what I just did was real and now we're in the next moment of just being yeah. grateful that I'm here again it's like it seems super cliche but I don't want to live in the past of like trying to be yeah. a perfectionist about it or worrying that I didn't do it right it's like just show up and just do it it's as real and give it as much as you can in the moment when it's yeah. the time yeah 100 just let it go and just be like it was what yeah. it was that's all it was and like yeah. just leave it there yeah and the voices eventually they do they dissipate yeah. like um yeah 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 I think they come and go and, and recently like noisily for example I didn't yeah. really have any of that going on really so it's yes, like right exactly yeah Amazing. I think the more energy you give to it if you focus on it all the time it might continue forever yeah. whereas if you just keep on every time you hear it and it's like yeah. oh it's not real I'm just gonna yeah, 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 yeah. then yeah. it does dissolve yeah. into it but it's always present and it will crop back up yeah. when you least expect it like, but that's yeah. what I've been doing more it's not real okay thank you mm. <laughs> you know yeah that's a trip isn't it you catch yourself and like yeah. see pattern you've been doing your whole life and you're like wait a minute I have a choice this isn't actually what I want to yes, do yes <laughs> and then choice. you just flip it and you're like oh my days I've been wanting to do that my whole life and then yes. sometimes sometimes you get it though and then sometimes you don't at all and you repeat the same cycle and you're watching yeah. yourself do it like oh my gosh I, I know all about this I don't want to do it and I'm doing it again like what am I doing it's so frustrating True. but then you learn something new each time you're like yeah but I did it slightly better than last yeah, time yeah 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 life that's the thing the patterns I do feel grateful for not being in the medicine community all the time right now for mm -hmm. the fact that like what I said at the start I'm grounding and yes. I'm rooting rather than feeling like I'm in a constant process all yes. the time Wait. and every conversation I have is spinning me out and like reflecting everything that I don't want to see about myself and my partner and my family and like seeing my reflections that I hate in everything and like just basically hating on everything because yeah. I'm starting to awaken all of my own shit and be like, oh, right, it's all me. It's all my fault. It's like, like okay. everything. And then you start to be so hard on yourself and then it comes out, it's easier to point at other people. So then I went through so many processes of like hating, like different members of family at different times and and not for long, but it's just that you see all the things that you don't like within them and then you realise that you're doing exactly the same thing and it's so hard to see. And, and I think like taking psychedelics regularly can just be exhausting for me that's the wow. thing anyone wow. who's known, has known me in the last seven years is probably like Josie in a process all the time because it's true I was I was doing so much that I was learning and evolving and changing and I'm just and I'm an Aries anyway double Aries sun and moon so like it's like recently I don't feel like I'm in that and I'm actually just like yeah way more grounded and just focused on like goals which are like easily manageable and like yeah. things and just like one thing at a time and and just not having so much influence yeah. from outside actually and like focusing more and like cultivating what I want to cultivate from the inside and then projecting that outwards it's just like yeah just that's something that I'm grateful for right now I'm not in a constant mind fuck process. I love that I would like to explore that more because I mean from what you said it sounded like that was a bit more that was like intricate to your process about like um I don't know seeing fault in other people yeah. but I totally resonate with that when I stepped away from the plant medicine suddenly everything was just clearer and it was just like easier and it wasn't I don't know like what what did you say here? like this it was like there was a lot of confusion mm. yeah get more way. well I've always thought the idea of like taking psychedelics in the most part for most people is to take it once to have a profound experience and then to leave it there yeah. whereas actually, like I got wrapped up in doing it regularly because I was playing music for the ceremonies and therefore it actually became a livelihood for me and mm. part of my experience of just living my girlfriend my partner we were all involved in it it was a friendship community job everything all in one so it's like oh that's what we do and we keep doing it I other people who are paying to come to it it's a different matter because then they're paying to come to it it's a whole different experience for them but from yeah, yeah. my experience of that it's just like yeah uh, I don't know when's too much of a good thing and like how are you even integrating what you're getting mm -hmm. from the experience if you're stacking them on top of each other and for me I think it was actually all right, right but there's been times where I feel like I've almost lost my mind and I don't know if that's a normal process for humans to go through I've never ended up in a psych ward or anything because I've got family around me and beautiful community and like healers who are authentically like my 
almost like mother figures to me and stuff like this like people who have really helped me through difficult times like the darkest hours when I've I've contemplated not wanting to live anymore like it's like it's opened me up to like the deepest parts of myself and then shown that to other people as well which is so shameful because then you start to like really be seen in all of your wounds and then it's so upsetting and scary and like and sometimes it's hard to even know how you can keep going and I just think if you keep stacking stuff on top of that and it's one thing after the other you d- you get moments of bliss again and you're like oh no I'm fine in the ceremony and then the week after you're back into it and it's just like I was just that's what I felt like I was for ages just all of my shit coming up all the time and then when I took the psychedelics it's almost that I was I was fine in that space that's when I'm naturally just doing what I do I play music and that's easy but it's the process that would con- come and continue onwards um that would kind of drive me insane and ruin my relationships and ruin everything but then I'm wondering if that's actually what I had to do and all of that was part of it and all of that maybe was predetermined and like all of my reflections were needed to be seen by the other and through my partnerships and my family and all that so that I could move through it all. So I don't know. It's like it's a tricky mm-hmm. one to know, like if it was something I had to go through or if it was just self-inflicted torture, because actually mm-hmm. eventually I've kind of come full circle to kind of come to myself again. I almost feel like it's like, yeah, Adam and Eve Apple thing. Like as a youth, I was around other people in a small village who maybe didn't have the same curiosity as me. I wanted to go and travel the world, mm-hmm. try every forbidden fruit possible and do mm-hmm. everything backwards, sideways. And you know what I mean? I'm, I'm an Aries and I just wanted to try everything, do everything. And I think that comes with a cost and a price to pay. It's almost like you've now literally have taken a bite of forbidden fruit and now you've got to learn the hard way what that actually entails and all of the things that come with that yeah. and it's like if you keep biting the forbidden fruit again and again and again and again and again you just continue stacking that up and I just yeah. life's been epic for me in my life but also been crazy and I don't know if it I was mental before psychedelics and like still was for it but I do think now they've they've helped me to realize that mm-hmm. I can have a more chilled experience if I like actually just choose it <laughs> Yes, that that is it. I love that because yeah, because what I'm hearing is like, yeah, you maybe you did need that to go through the process, da, 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 but then to get to where you are. But then from that point, you can realize that you have a choice. Like yeah. you can either continue that cycle doing it that way or choose something different. You know. Mm. Yeah. But it's fascinating. So, do you think what it sounds like? Uh, maybe there wasn't enough time with the integration or. Yeah, it's a difficult one with that. That's because that, even with it now, like I, I, I do think the psychedelics have en, uh, enhanced me as a person. Yeah. I feel like they're like a catalyst for evolution. I wonder how much any of this is like my control sometimes, and it's all maybe destiny. Like I could go into that debate forever, but it's like yeah. it seems to have sped up my evolution process and helped me to go through so many difficult experiences and reflections and. Um, all of these things that help me to kind of see myself deeper and deeper and deeper, which eventually I think has helped me to understand others better and have more compassion and be able to like kind of hold space for myself because I'm not so judgmental of, of others because it's life's been quite hard for me to like move through. So therefore I have more understanding of how difficult it yeah. is for people. So I'm not so quick to be like, oh, you, you're an idiot. It's like, oh, yeah. they're angry. Maybe there's a whole yeah. story behind them being angry, which is like really difficult. And they're not trying to be mean to me right now, but I just have to maybe hold space for that sort of thing. And it's a difficult thing to like kind of go through to understand anything with life. But yeah. the thing with the psychedelics is like, if you take it, it's your process. You're the one who's got to experience it. So holding space for the integration is kind of difficult and impossible almost, unless you're going to go live in a retreat center where like you'll be held for a month and they'll be looking after you and looking after your food and everything you're doing then you kind of get like for me I was taking the medicine in the space and then going back into my normal life and then therefore I'm integrating it all within my sort of experience of just normality and bringing that was bringing everything up so I'm almost bringing up loads of processes for everyone in my experience and stuff but it's what's going to happen like I just uh I think like the integration, I don't, I'm not really sure if there's an easy way to go about it, um, unless maybe you do book yourself into a like a yoga retreat for six months or or like a, a retreat somewhere where you can literally live about anything and just journal all the time and like really work on yourself. But, but if you're like on the front lines, like I felt like I was, just drinking the medicine and going straight back into normal life, it's like, well, all of those reflections are going to come up in the normal life and like it's, you're going to see them in your best mates and in your girlfriend and your family and all that. It's like, so it's going to be difficult for you to kind of like process all of that. So yeah, it's, I, I just, yeah, whenever whenever I kind of recommend it to anyone or talk about it with anyone, 
I don't ever, I'm not the sort of person who likes to give it to anyone or like kind of like tell you that it's something that you should do because it's like, it's your choice. Because if you decide to open Pandora's box, it's your choice to kind of explore that alone. And like, I can't be there when it's all going like pear shape because it's going to yeah. go pear shape and you're going to see the worst things and all yeah. the hard I want to see and that's what's going to definitely happen like I can almost guarantee it personally for me I kind of wanted that in a weird way because I yeah I, that I was just going to say that I thrive off it but like it's yeah. not maybe for everyone and I think and yeah. I don't know I, it's hard to say so like all I would ever say with caution is just like it is potentially one of the best things you could ever do and it might change your entire experience and and but it might also ruin your life and yeah. in the next six months you everything might fall apart you might lose your girlfriend you might lose your job like yeah. it seems to have massive effects on you and if you're not maybe in alignment completely with what your soul plan was or something it might just shake everything everything up. Yeah, yeah i already thought i was doing what i was meant to be doing which is music and it still shook my life up like mental. yes wow yeah it's hard to say and the yeah. integration i don't know if anyone can really hold it for you so i you always just tell yourself. people like yeah do yourself take five grams by yourself in darkness and and know that that's then going to create a process for you yeah. to experience and and just be accountable for that but yeah like yes. people do pay money to be have other people hold space for you but yeah they can hold space for you in the in the space in the and, moment yeah. They cannot, yeah, they can offer you this space outside of that, like if you give them a ring and stuff. But realistically, it is your process, your process. to take on. Yeah, you've opened the the door at that point. Yeah. And that's that's one thing that I think people do need to be aware of. Yeah, like yeah. When you're crying your eyes out at four o'clock in the morning and you've had a massive argument with your partner and you just don't know what to do anymore, it's just like there's no one going to be there for you at that moment. You're there by yourself. Like it's just like, and that's the hard work that like you might not be able to handle by yourself. So it is good to have a community. And for that reason, the ayahuasca community, all these things are good, but then everyone's traumas are coming up and getting wrapped up and intermingled. So it's, it's hard to know if that's healthy either. Maybe it is because we're just working all out together, but it can also get quite toxic. And I've seen that in loads of different ways. So I ultimately just have like brought myself back to where I want to be, which is in the middle of nowhere, living with my partner and I kind of cultivating my own experience. And then kind of that's for me, but I don't want to live in community all the time. I don't want to be in other people's processes all the time. It's too much. I, I want to choose when I want to like put myself into service. I don't want to be like forcibly told that, oh, I'm in a process. You need to, like, I'll get that for my girlfriend. I've got enough of that. My cat's big, they're enough. I don't need that from 15 other people living in the same space when I'm also just like, I need some silence actually. Because I found that hard, yeah, yeah. living in a community. You've said a few things here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, Fudge, wait, okay. So firstly, um, oh, man, just this thing you said about community is just getting out to me, actually. Oh, yeah. So that's also why I feel like I went into exploring with ayahuasca. I feel like I was like, you know what, I'm ready. Show me everything. Show me the darkness. Da, da, da. But then after a while, it was so freaking intense. I was just like, I don't, why do I, why am I throwing myself in here all the time? Mm. Like life is enough. I can learn just through life. I don't need to put myself into this weird energy all the time. You know, eventually I was just like, like you said, the choice, mm. but at the, at the time, like I wanted to explore it, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah it's good too. Yeah. It could definitely can. I think the, the search for perfection as well can like, we can be so hard on ourselves. Like after taking the medicine, I started like, I, I was like vegan, I stopped drinking coffee, I stopped drinking alcohol, I stopped smoking cannabis, I like stopped doing everything that I used to do just without even worrying about it and just kind of put all these harshnesses on myself. And then I was quite a lot of the time for a couple of years sober, like eating vegan raw, like fasting all the time. So even that alone would cause you a huge process. Oh, like, yeah, that's really, so true. Like, very militant on your like whole lifestyle and not giving yourself any space to relax or just kind of like have a little break here and there with a little spliff or a beer or something. It's like, if you're just constantly, that's what I was doing for a while because I was with partners who were kind of on that path and it was, I guess, good for me. But same thing for me. I used to always have this problem of like, is this all life's meant to be now? Me just upset and in the process all the mm -hmm. time. Everywhere I go, I'm jealous. I'm upset. I'm just processing all the time. I can never just be happy and just have a conversation. Mm. Just present. I'm just always in a massive process. Yeah. And then you realize it's like, well, yeah, it's a choice. Like if you take psychedelics every weekend, this is your reality. Yeah. If you choose to be with this person who kind of brings up all your triggers all the time, it maybe isn't actually that aware of what you need because they don't even maybe know you that well because you're actually right now showing a part of yourself that is a little bit fake. Like, it's so difficult to like wow, know yeah. like, maneuver anything but yeah you always have a choice and eventually you can always strip it back I think and and no one you don't know anything to anyone at the end of the day you're born alone you are you are you're born alone you will die alone, alone. yeah that, really? I mean it's interesting like it's interesting what you said about like always being in the process because like and I love what you said as well about your journey has always been with music that's how you came into it so it's almost like you I don't know I think a lot of people go to these plant medicines because they're like looking for something but it, it's, in a way it sounds like you kind of had 
a trajectory already and then the way that you come out of it is still the same thing you know yeah, so, okay. so yeah in a way it wasn't like that was your entire uh identity yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really lucky though that I've always known since I was a little boy that I wanted to be a drummer I've had yeah. this clear message I'm meant to be a drummer and I'm meant to help the whole world of music oh my god I love that Funnily weird because then I never wanted to learn about musical theory and I've been completely going on it my own, absolutely just like Amazing. stubbornly doing it my way and like and developing my own flow. And then like yeah. when I stopped in the drum kit, the hand pan came in and then I've like taught myself how to play that. And now I teach people how to play that and like teach people how to understand music through rhythm. And like I'm teaching myself how to play the piano and I've taught myself how to play the guitar all through rhythm. And it's like I'm very stubborn. I think my path is not to follow any, anyone here right now, but to kind of learn from everything, yeah. everyone, but take the best of everything I can find and put it together and create some different and that's kind yeah. of my um, that's where I'm at I've always been like that I'm uh, yeah. in I that resonate scene. deeply with that yeah, yeah it's kind of annoying sometimes I won't follow anyone and I'll have yeah. to like go through it head first so for me yeah. the ayahuasca thing I had to do it myself I had to stumble head first into it face yeah. plant and just do it a hundred times to like kind of really like get the message to like realize what it was for me I can't read it in a book and she's like yeah sound I'll, I'll believe what that person said like yeah. personally I have to but it's no. actually myself suffering so but it's the most real thing and I feel like it's the only way to learn is through your own yeah you know? and that's what I'd recommend to everyone and it and eventually ultimately you'll get wisdom because you'll know it yes. deeply to the core yes. but it is but when I look back on myself, I'm like, I've seen other people go through life way easier than I've done it. Uh -huh, like, uh -huh, I've yeah. kind of made it harder for myself, but I wouldn't ever change the thing because yeah. that's the way I am. But... And it develops your empathy for other people, you know? Yeah, and mindfulness of just like, you don't always have to throw yourself headfirst into experiences. Just as the mm. first flash that comes into my mind doesn't mean I've got to do that. Just because I take mm. a breath and like think about what I want to say rather than just act out of like what I'm feeling in this instant trigger sort of thing. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting. So... Because I feel like, yeah, so uh, some people do place this, this like plant medicine thing like as their identity and you can see and and that's why you can kind of see like it will be so difficult for them to like step away because now that's, yeah. that's what they do. It's like you were kind of saying, you know. Yeah, and I actually found it a little bit overwhelming for myself at certain points because I didn't want to lose myself and like I, I, I kind of came into it playing handpan and, and then because I was around people who were like into mantras and stuff. I was like, Oh yeah, I can do that. I can. And I started singing mantras and, and actually had my own spiritual experiences with mantras and like self in um, self empowerment and realizations through doing it. But that was all self-taught. Like I just like kind of met someone, he gave me one and I started doing it and then I actually started experiencing miracles. And, and then I started doing it regularly oh. and singing it and like, it literally started changing my the way I experienced consciousness all the time. And I, I was chanting Hare Krishna all the time at one point in my mind. So it was real for me at one point. And then like I shared that I started doing singing, singing circles with people regularly. And when it was real for me, I shared it. And then it kind of, I drifted out of it. And I was like, oh, this doesn't feel like me anymore. Like I, I needed that because it helped unlock my voice. It helped because I didn't have to worry about the lyrics. I'm dyslexic. So like to have the mantras, which had no words attached to them. And they were just like, this is a mantra. It's been here forever. Just sing that on repeat. And then that's all you don't have to think about anything. For me, that was very easy. It's like drumming. It's like a rhythmical thing. So I started singing with my voice and mantras and hearing myself sing, which allowed me to learn, know myself and my own voice and then get confident with my own voice, which then uh, in combination, listening to other musicians and repeating and copying what the, how they're sing, singing, like Nick Mulvey, I really liked him. I've sung his albums for years. I started to develop my own sense of, oh, I like how I do that. And I like how I do that. So you just have to keep doing it. So mm. I don't know if the mantra is like unlocked my divinity and showed me mm. everything. And if it, I can give any credit to like Krishna or Shiva or anything, but I can say that I did repeat it a lot of times, but for me, it's always rhythm and it was rep repetition and maybe I could have repeated anything and sung anything and actually just heard that and heard my own voice and then unlocked my divinity because that's the thing and that is the thing that I had to be honest about when I was in the circles and when I came out of it of like I need to come back to who I am I need to be authentic I need to remember what yeah. I used to do music for before I traveled before I got into any of these circles it's yeah I used to do it as a child for fun and I love it and it's what makes me alive. Yeah. Whereas I found myself in the circles actually finding I didn't I wasn't enjoying it and I was doing it like almost like a performing monkey and like and then I was around people who I maybe didn't feel were always being authentic and it was just like, yeah. what am I doing this for? Like yeah. who am I trying to prove myself to? What is this about? Yeah. Like and eventually that's kind of what it came for. And that was the breaking arm moment of me, just like go home, start playing drum kit again, go back to your roots, go back to your family, start playing in a local band again, like stop putting all this pressure on music to be like your money maker, your like everything, just like have fun with music again and like come back. So for me, it's been that process over the last year, like just yeah. doing fun and, and it has been easier. And I do think people would struggle if they as always attach their identity to that like if you become a vegan and now all you talk about is veganism yeah. like anything. To then, 
Yeah, you might struggle then to go back to being me- a meat eater. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Convince yeah. everyone in your life that you, they should be vegan. Yeah. It's like, whereas, because I'm always focusing on the drumming and the rhythm, I'm not perfect and I stumble through life, but I think people just know that about me. And I go through loads of different things and I'm like, oh, I'm trying this now, but it's still with the music and, as the bass layer. And then when I fall off it, I'm like, I'm not into that anymore. It's music that carries me to the next thing, whether that's a relationship, mm. a place to live, a job. It's always been music for me. I'm obsessed and I will never give up. I, I feel like I'm like in a constant relationship with music. And even my own yeah. partners have found that very frustrating because I'm just like, that's yeah. my goal. Like if you're not mm. serving that, I have to let you go and keep going. And it might seem obsessive and almost like mean, but it's like, I've known this since a child. I'm here to help everyone I want to do. And that's like the only thing that makes me happy. So yeah, that's your calling, man. Yes, but I'm lucky because I've not met many people. I've met some, but like not many who knew it since a child. So I don't know why that was. The only thing I could possibly say is my mum and dad were really good. And I was a third child. So I I had a lot of space, a lot of love and a lot of time. I was given time to explore myself and my creativity. So I was allowed to play drums. I had a drum kit in my living room. I was allowed to paint all the time. Like I, it was allowed. Um, and, and there was space and time for a long time until I was like 18. There was no pressure. Like I got jobs and stuff from 12 years old for myself, but like my mom and dad looked after me, they created a safe space. And I think maybe because of that, I was able to keep hold of this beautiful childlike essence of like, I want to be a drummer. And it was really pure and just like easy and simple. And I never left. And I've kept that through my whole life. And it's actually got harder as I've got older to keep that. Being like, I'm still just a drummer. Like, I just don't yeah. know what else. And it's yeah. like, it's almost it's almost immature at this stage, but it's continued yeah. to lead me to where I'm at right now, teaching people about basic rhythms and just simplified yeah. understandings of music so that everyone can ultimately experience the same freedom that I have through it. Because it is <sighs> that, it's, it's absolute bliss when, you, when you're in music and you're expressing from your soul yeah. uh, with other people. There's nothing better than that. And I experienced that this weekend at Noisley. And it I was just going to say that. Yes. Yeah. It blew my mind again. Cause it's like, it's I forget, again. I forget that about Same. that. I have a jam and I'm like, this is why I play music. Like, Oh my God. There's something about it. And just like together, there's this like unspoken language between the musicians as well. It's mm-hmm. freaking amazing. And th- there was this one moment at Noisley, for example, I, I met this guy and I was just, just not even planning to play music that day. It was my day off. I was having fun with my friends. And then all of a sudden I'm in a jam with this guy and he's amazing. He's called Jedi. He plays the drums. And his friend, I think he's called Freddie, played the drums as well. My mate, Harry. And we just created the most random expressions and it all came together. And it was one of the best musical experiences I've ever, ever had in my life. And because of that, he was like, do you want to come play this performance now? And then we took all our gear and we're like, yeah, we'll go do it. And actually the performance didn't work out as well as we wanted it to. The sound wasn't right. It was big speakers and it was we did it basically in the car park before that but the it was like the pick of destiny like tenacious d song it was the best song in the oh, world yeah, but then yeah, you yeah. can't recreate it it's like in the moment it yeah. was the the yeah, vibe in that up. moment it was perfect and then you try and recreate it and it'll never be that and mm. then it's just you have to just let that go sometimes but yeah, like, totally. i was witness to something bigger than myself and that's what music for me yeah into. oh my word i love that yeah. but to be honest i have had a similar journey because with music because I knew from a very young age like I think it was in year eight and I was yeah. like I'm, I started to play the guitar but I used to play the violin before that and then I was like I'm going to go to university I'm going to study music this is what I want to do and from then I just knew nice. and it's true though because like I not many people know from such a young age as well yeah and and also some people maybe feel the pressures of society or their yeah, parents true. or even just a friend who just might get told from their parents like oh you shouldn't do that because it doesn't make you money like I've had loads of compliments in my life, but the yeah. things that stick with me are the negative things. When people say something yeah. like, oh, you'll never make money doing that. Like that yeah. was stuck in my head. And like, so it's so easy to go with that. Sure. And then yeah. six years down the line, be like, why didn't I do what I wanted to do? Oh yeah, yeah. I followed what they said and they're not yeah. doing what they want to do either. And it's like, it's very easy to just fall into something that you think you should do. I'm constantly trying to catch myself in every moment, never trying to do anything that I feel like I should do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it hundred percent. I shouldn't do it like if I'm not doing it to please anyone else because if I don't actually want to do it myself I shouldn't be there because I'm actually not showing up authentically and I'm almost resenting the experience and like I'll Mm. be negative and all that so it's like that's ultimate self-love it's like if I can enjoy knowing that I want to be there I'm there Mm. if I have any inkling of like I don't want to be there I'll stay at home with my cats because mm. actually better for everybody to not be involved if I'm not if I'm not really wanting to be there sort of thing. Mm. But it's a not it's a constant thing that we're all trying to yeah, do. Yeah, totally. Society. Being others in it, yeah, and just like we, we've been we've all done that our whole life, I think. Yeah, I totally resonate with a, a lot of what you say as well. And also, it, it was like this calling. It was like music to to really affect lives, you know from such a young age and I didn't really know how or you know Ooh. and then and then I studied mu- music right and then after that I had to go through this whole process of forgetting everything I learned I was like this is not the yeah. way 
like I need to remove all of that because it's really stopping me from just being able to flow like spontaneously and in the moment yeah like blockages of too much information overthinking it yeah and I think a lot of I saw it in a lot of us who studied music it's wild Mm. I had it in graphic design as well. I studied graphic design and by the end of the process, I hated it and I didn't want to be a graphic designer. I yeah. felt abused and judged and fit judged. into a box that I didn't want to fit into and like all of these things. And then I never, yeah, trying to please other people creatively, just don't do it. You should yeah. do what you want to do every time. Yeah. And like, same thing, it's like, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Like you should be making the music that you like listening to and you like jamming to like and yeah. sharing that because that's you, like that's what you're, that's what the, again, that's what the thing coming out of the ayahuasca, it's like taking myself out of living in a community, not being around the same people repetitively every month or whatever, coming back to an isolated space in the middle of the countryside where I don't see many people all the time and I'm creating for myself every day. That for me is where I actually create my authentic experience and then new songs come through that no one uh, can really relate to apart from me because I'm tapping into my experiences. Mm-hmm. Sort of thing. And I actually get really frustrated when I can't get that space. If, yes. if I can't play music alone, I don't think I can tap into the same vulnerability because I'm not that confident. Some people have got the ability to, in front of others, practice and share and just work things out. I'm really insecure and I like need to be in a, almost a room where no one can hear me so I can just play music and be really like raw, make mistakes, which then can be, become new ideas and new thought processes. And yeah, yeah, it's like a whole process so like I don't know how any, I can't talk for anyone else but for me it's always be, like coming back to that doing what you know you want to do so if I wake up in the morning and I don't want to do it don't do it get yeah, the bath yeah, yeah, do yeah. something else don't be mean yeah. to yourself like just because if, if you follow yeah. the flow of love for yourself then it will lead you to the ultimate creativity and like eventually you'll tap into something that you didn't even know was possible and it would happen the way you couldn't have imagined and mm. but it's always just like being kind to yourself I think and yes being authentic as well like you know what's best for you at the end of the day and that's why ayahuasca plant medicines are good because they do help you to see those things but you don't need to be like caught up in a cult or a, a like a like a thing to that is constantly making you pay to be there and i don't know it's just like bring it back to what is real bring like, it home yeah. yeah bring it back to what you want to do with your everyday life make your experience the best because it's what you want don't, you don't need to cross-reference it with anyone else it's like yeah so I like what you said there's a few things so about the music and how it makes you uh, be in touch with something a lot bigger than you so I feel like in a way that's what you came into the ceremonies kind of space with and you always had it and I think a lot of people go there because they're trying to find it you know they're looking for that Mm. and then also related to like what you're saying about the community um and no I feel like that's how you were so easily able to like move through it like to go in and out and like take what you need from it and then move forwards. Yeah. Because I don't know, it seems like in you, in a way, there was a, kind of that was already existing. But at yeah. the same time, like it sounds like your uh, path and your personality is very, very much like, um, I don't know, adaptable and not like taking with your identity because maybe because you already had that as well. Maybe that yeah. the, that's like really a big part of it. <laughs> I think I'm like, a- I'm like a master in training, to be completely honest. And I'm getting oh, to a level. I love that. I'm getting into a level where I can actually recognize it. After a whole life of being very insecure and not able to really own it, I'm actually 30 years old now and I've traveled the world playing music and released many albums and collaborated with loads of people. And even though I've still got the insecurities and all the voices telling me I'm shit, I know through experience and all the people who have told me now that it's like, I'm actually getting better. I'm getting quite good at this now. And I keep mm. putting more time in and busking for like six hours at a time and just like getting better and better. And I can feel that I'm getting more like a machine mm. with my playing and stuff. And like, and not in like the bad sense of like not being yeah. creative, but like it's becoming second nature. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's something that has just been an ongoing obsession since I was a little boy. Like I love playing music. I love being able to do it my way and whatever I can think in my head, yeah. express it instantly as I want to. And like, that's something that gives me complete freedom because yeah, I'm not good with words, actually. I'm better now, but when I was younger, I was dyslexic, and I've worked through that, I think, for growing up, and I do creative things, and I like to be creative with my words, so everything I do, writing poetry songs, might be just creative, so I, I have a way of getting around it, but when it comes to, like, music, it's like, I have no blockages, it's like, I can, like, I think, and I can do it, so it just, as it comes to me, it just comes out, and I'm like, yeah, it's just, like, such a feeling, and I'm, like, constantly trying to master that, uh, and just come back to that practice, and whether it's through the hand pan, the keyboard, the drum kit, singing, like walking like this uh, all rhythm is the thing that I'm working on for a lifetime I think and that's now what I'm actually realizing is my gift to share it with people and nothing more really than just starting you off on your own practice of like if you start doing this now in five years you'll be way better in 10 years you'll be like Mm -hmm. more coordinate with both of your hands like and just able to like express yourself with as your brain like just like 
drumming for me is like and rhythm it started as drumming now it's rhythm is the thing and it's yeah. like that's the thing that I think I can now understand my purpose as a weird rhythmical being yeah. is now give that back to people so like what we yeah. like we said about the p- thing that people are looking for is to have that experience of community and something that unifies them and I learned a lot about this when I was in Sri Lanka because I used to work at this place called Camp Po and every week I'd have a drum circle there and I would be in charge of running it and they had all, all these drums that they have um and so every week I'd turn up and there would be the same crowd it's kind of youngsters like maybe not but well, like 21, 18, 30 max or something, younger people. And they're all mingling, drinking a couple of beers and like they've been surfing and then they're going out for like a, a night sort of thing. So I'd turn up with like the drums and like, okay, everyone let's do drums. And I'd get the same experience every week. People wouldn't be that interested. They'd like kind of shy, like, oh, no, I don't know how to play. I don't want to play, don't worry. But I knew they did, but they would always do the same thing. And then I'd almost feel awkward, like, oh, no one wants me to be here. But I could just feel like they're all kind of a bit scared. So I'd like just kept on doing it. Like, don't worry, everyone, I'm going to set the drums up after dinner. Don't have to think about it. I'm going to be there. And then fin- dinner finishes, I get all the drums out, put them around the tables. And then I'm like, okay, everyone, let's go play drums. And, and it's like, I had to be this like really like enthusiastic person, almost like a child. Like, come on, give it a go, give it a go. I'd get one person in and then another person would come. Before you know it, the whole group of people would be there every week, like 20 to 30 people. And they'd all be shaking and drumming and expressing themselves. And the same thing would come out of each of their mouth. Like, I didn't even think I could do that. I didn't know I could play music. I didn't think I could. And all it takes is for someone to like hold that space. And like, I'd have like big congas and set like a rhythm which is really simple and then just allow people to come in on the top of it and I would keep it going so they could just jump in and out and to see the the experience of everyone to come together and be unified through music for me every week was just like so powerful mm. it really showed me like this is like something worth doing Joe like this is this brings me so much happiness to be able to actually mm. pull this out of people and like give them a safe space to do it and so then that's kind of been leading me forward ever since it started in Sri Lanka and that's that I doing an online course for the handpan and now I've actually got to the point where I've got about 60 drums in my house um and uh, I'm going to start doing drum workshops regularly that's what I'm working towards in the next Amazing. I don't know 10 years and I don't think I'm ready to do it right now but it's I'm, I'm in the process of starting to do that on a regular basis and I hope to like create community events where people can come yeah. and unify through music which I think is offering the same sort of thing that people are looking for with the ayahuasca ceremony but hopefully this will be either free or a tenor or five or something you know and it's a some simple thing that you come and you can learn through build community have unified experience but, but not have to take the strongest psychedelic on yes. the planet make yourself a bit mental for like the next three months yeah so that's what I've that's what I want I want more grounded community and that's what I feel like I have to do otherwise I will lose my mind so that's kind oh of what was snapped me and made me kind of do this now and I it's yes. been ages. I was avoiding it for yes ages. oh my word no but I love this like fudge um yeah and as you were speaking I'm just like reminded like obviously the music is such a big part in the ceremonies right like yeah. it is the ceremony like you know what I mean like it creates the experience so yeah. much and I feel like yeah one thing that I've just been brought back to so much more this past like year is that we are sound we are frequency that's mm. what we are so it's like we are craving these moments these spaces like I do this conscious dance event as well but mm. also I'm also focusing on doing like sober things you know mm. Because mm. I, I don't know, I feel personally that like um, sometimes these things that we take can take us outside of ourselves and away when actually, you know, we're actually um, developing and unraveling this magic that is here when we're sober, like that's mm. totally powerful, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, definitely, yeah. And, and I think it's something that everyone has to go through realizing that like you don't need anything to be you. Like mm. if you can just wake up and drink a glass of water and eat food, and just be you you're winning because like that's that's not not many people on this planet are doing that like coffee straight away wow that's so true straight away. alcohol straight away even t- tv or phone straight away like there's everyone's got addictions and i'm putting my hand up and saying i have it too like for me it's always been cannabis and i've always like ended up going to that for my like fix all the time and i think we all have that something there's something that we feel does we need to make us a full person um I've been through phases where I thought I needed cannabis to sleep. I needed cannabis to play music. It's like you can trick your brain into like literally believing that that's what you need and stuff. But that's something that ayahuasca showed me as well. It's like you're aiming to get to the place where you just wake up and you are you and you don't need anything. And you just breathe through anything that comes to you and you're just happy. And you just you are a person who can just take on anything. Yeah. Just like feeling it. Like that's the goal. That's, that's got a powerful. Goal. Yeah, full organic. The goal, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's well, it. Like, if it's not that, then I don't know what it is. Like, I don't want to yeah. be 
sniffing happy at my nose every 10 minutes and like taking cactus every Saturday and like plant medicine vine every Sunday like it's like I don't want that to be my goal that's that's oh just like God. the process to get me to what I'm because we've all lost I that, love that haven't we like the kids are kids because they're yeah. that they're pure they're pure they're the absolute pure that's what all yes. the sense of life is it's like yes you are perfect when you're born sadly there's something going on yeah. in the world society yeah. that we are all kind of getting a bit yes you whiffed and maybe it is this whole Adam and Eve thing that we're learning about in the hard way everyone has to do it for themselves learn their lessons and yeah. I don't know but ultimately yeah if we can come back to just being but happy it, being alive that's 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 yeah. it I mean it sounds so simple <laughs> exactly, it is it's not though it's so hard <laughs> but I like what you said it's like it's more using the medicine as a tool but yeah. and I feel like this is something that isn't necessarily spoken about it's like and again I feel like with you in a music journey and what you were describing about rhythm and everything and mm. you know taking everything and then you um using it in your own way I mm. feel like um I feel like that and it sounds like you do that with music but not just with the music like that kind of skill is with everything like you said with the mantra with the you know it's like moving through it and mm. I feel like this is something that's not really spoken about it's like mm. when is like the time the time to move on and yeah, when yeah. you know Fast, when is, do you know what I mean and when and the process of moving through, because like you said, so many people, they, you know, mantra, and then they, like, I find it really interesting that you said that you did that, and then you stepped away from it, you know what I mean? I was, I was fully in that, yeah, and I've had a period where I was fully in Christianity for about a year, because I had a spiritual experience in church, and I was trying to convince everyone to the Bible for the year, like, wow, yeah, you go through phases, and they're real at the time, yeah, but, but, but yeah, letting go of it, and growing yeah. on is hard, knowing when to, like, like, yeah. out with grace, and be like, that was the experience, I'm ready for the next one, it's hard yeah that's something that I'm going through now actually constantly the process because I've spent the last seven years traveling playing music yeah. being free living in a van or just living at surf camps and like just being completely able to be like anything that came to me like yeah I'll do that now I'll go to that festival yeah I've got nothing like complete freedom uh and like now I'm like oh I want a job I'm living in a house I've got bills to pay I've got like responsibilities to look after some cats and I've got a partner and like, I'm showing up for all these different things and there's like a whole process for me, which kind of yearns for the old version of me. But actually, when I was doing the old version of me towards the end of those years, I was living it to the max and not enjoying it because I wasn't even wanting to be there anymore. I was craving for what I'm now living. So it's like now I'm living it. There's a part of me wants the old stuff. It's always the grass is greener on the other side. And I'm so aware of that now. So I'm just kind of just like realizing for me mm -hmm. right now, it's like just accept this new chapter of grace, Joe, because if you don't, you're going to live in the past and you won't even experience this. But if you do experience this new one, there's a whole new kettle of fish here. Like you can like open yourself up to commitment, to like to expanding yourself through your art practices even deeper because you've got more time to do that. Like, like I don't know, there's so, so many perks that will come with the new thing, but you've got to be able to say goodbye to the old thing with grace. Yeah. And, and it's not that you don't like it anymore. It's not like I'm like saying like I hate mantras now and I like... Yes. I, I hate people who are vegan or anything like that it's like no no at that time in my life I was there completely 100% and now where I'm at is real for me right now I don't want anyone else to like judge that because I'm not judging them it's just like I'm just where I'm at and I'm being yeah. honest who I am and it's funny how we all yeah like it's funny where we get to and like you feel sometimes you feel like you're going backwards like yeah. I'm enjoying drinking again now every now and then and I and I never used to for about six seven years I didn't drink and it was like now I come back to him like, oh, I can see why people enjoy this. I've got a different relationship with it again. And it's just, just swings and roundabouts. Everything comes and goes. But yeah, oh, saying true. goodbye to things, relationships, like jobs or times. It's like, it's one of the hardest things because you, you always hold on, like just in case you might want it. But then it's like, if you don't let go, you don't create space for someone else to come in. That's so true. But I find that it's such a big thing in the spiritual community. It's like, uh, it's so interesting. And I feel, I feel like it's so important to to be able to move through things because then you get such a bigger picture of what's happening you know it's like mm. such a broader view yeah you can see so much more you know like traveling for example do you remember the first time you went to like travel somewhere mm. quite far out and then you just like you've left that old experience of yourself mm. behind and now you're like seeing a whole new thing a new culture a new cuisine new experiences new people new opportunities new everything and it's just like wow that doesn't even matter anymore that thing that I was doing like I could completely reinvent myself right now like I can learn about like it's like you can't know about it until you've kind of opened yourself into it you can't really and people who don't open self will may never know about it and they'll may always just block it and be like no I don't want to know about it I don't care whatever but like until you do it whether it's a psychedelic or a traveling experience like you're not going to open yourself up to new things and like that's the thing that 
if you just keep doing ayahuasca every weekend and staying within the same community, how are you possibly going to become authentic and create your own experience out of that? Yeah, you might be able to take loads of medicine and find something new, but like, I don't know. It's like, you still need to have new experiences which are different, which are authentic to you, which are kind of like you connected mm. with the universe and flowing for you to like receive back the lessons. Mm. For you. We all communication. We all communicate with the universe all the time. Like, mm-hmm. and so many people are scared to admit it because of religion and all that. But it's like, if you tune in and you are sober most of the time, you don't need to be. I love cannabis. Like I always have to remind, like, I, I love to be stoned and I can do everything stoned and there's no problem for me. And actually it works better most of the time because I'm more relaxed, but everyone's got their own thing. But like, yeah, if you can tune in and let go when you need to and open yourself up to the new thing, which is usually scary, then you're probably going to be moving towards something new, which is always good because you're just not stagnant. And as soon as I feel myself getting stagnant, whether that's in a relationship or community or a job, I start acting out and I start getting more abusive with my habits. So I'll start smoking too much or drinking more than I would usually because I'm not happy anymore. And then I'll start playing out and like being like not not the same person I want to be that I know I could be. And that's almost yourself acting out to self-sabotage everything so you can fucking get out of there because you don't want to be there. Your soul screaming at you, just like, move on, let go. This isn't good for you. Like, why are you still oh, doing this? Wow, yeah. That's what I've experienced anyway. Like, I've, I, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. But when I've left things behind that I think will maybe cause me to act out and then I find a whole new sense of peace, it's like, well, potentially that was just you holding on to somebody or something too tight and not being able to just accept that that was maybe something you went through and now you've got to let go and they'll be better off without you and you'd be be, like that's hard I've hurt people and they've hurt me from holding on too much with love and like not knowing when to let go and just be like you know what you would be better off without me now Mm. something I've learned recently and I did it the last time I broke up with somebody and I don't think they received it the way that I wanted it to be received because I thought it was a gift of like clean cut Great, yeah and this like no more toxic like that I, we've yeah. been hurting each other I didn't want this to get this to this like stop but like they didn't seem to see it that way because maybe in their mind it was abandoned but it's like no like if it's not going to help you it's anymore working, like, yeah. move on like and yeah. do them yeah. a favor like, allow them space to get over you completely by not yeah. interacting with them at all so that they can completely get the message yeah. like, it's hard it seems wrong at the time but then when you yeah. talk about that self-love and like move through it and and come out stronger and actually come to peace with that person eventually because you like i hope they're the same place that i am because i'm feeling way better that's surely better like, yeah i mean i feel like this is just something that's not really spoken about you know so yeah. much yeah. it almost feels like it's abandoning does it people are very loyal yeah. whether it's a football team yeah. or a school class people i stay loyal to people for the rest of their life yeah. i've actually been the opposite and i think yeah. it's been seen by some people as a problem because like yeah i'll always I'll, be, I'll have the best authentic experience with you we'll be best friends and then next thing i've gone and i'm in portugal for the next six months and then i'll make new friends there and then i've left and it's like if you're committed to the flow of the universe you don't even have a choice you just keep moving through it mm. and you'll have such so, like raw real experiences with people and they could be your best friend if you stayed there for the rest of your life but you gotta move on and then you're gonna meet someone else like that so it's like it's not a personal thing it's just continuing yeah but i'm i'm actually personally tired of that now i know who i want my friends to be in my family yes. and i think i'm like ready to yeah. kind of close that circle i used to be going out and now I'm like okay it's time to like yeah. close it up yeah. have the people I can really trust and uh, move forward with mastering who I am and how I can give that back to the world like I think that's what it feels like, like for me now yeah it's so but I think also like with the awakening when you're evolving it so quickly like sometimes the old relationships they just it just, just doesn't work anymore like it just doesn't resonate it's just they just fall fall away yeah but, yeah and it but can feel personal but it's not it's yeah. not Yes, exactly. But there's definitely something grounding about having like people who know you around as well. Like, you know. Yeah, definitely. And actually something that I've admired in people my whole life, people I've seen who have just had one girlfriend and then they've stuck it through and they're married and have kids. And yes. I just part of me that admires that because I'm yes. like, that's not me at all. I had to yeah. go off and try every flavor and and hurt myself in the process to then come full circle to realize that actually that is what I wanted, but I didn't know it. And it's almost like coming full circle of the forbidden fruit and be like, this time full circle i won't take that fruit off that tree because i'm actually yeah. cool. i'm going to chill with what i know and i don't need to go full circle loop around again i'm terrified of opening up pandora's box again i'm just like okay i got it like let's come back to joe yeah like, let's let's be part of the whole again and like mm. yeah i think that does maybe come a point where you don't need to keep going more outwards or you might just lose it you might i don't because then i feel like i'll spend the rest of my life integrating what i've learned now from like yes. these experiences and that they'll be building upon them and yeah. and into my community and giving yeah. back to my family and the people that know me yeah yeah but also it sounds like you're also just doing it in your life do you know what I mean like you the relationship is there the container is there within the, and I feel like that's one of the most powerful things about relationship is that you know 
the way that it opens the mirror to see what's really happening you know what I mean <laughs> yeah and it's, and it's not easy like I was saying it's not easy uh, midway through this it's like there's there's been points where I couldn't really be with my family because I think they really didn't like me and I didn't like them at the time because I was seeing all my reflections of who they were as a problem and like I'll be like everything that I don't like about myself came from you and I'm blaming you and all these sort of things and that negative vibes and me being very judgmental because I was a vegan I didn't drink alcohol and I was like be around my family who just do what they'd always done and I'd be sat there like oh you shouldn't be eating that you shouldn't be drinking that it's like who are you Joe to come in and just like try and change people like and there's there's been times where it's been friction for me and others around me friends luckily for me I've had beautiful family and friends who have actually supported me through that whole journey and even if they weren't with me throughout most of it and they didn't really get what I was doing like they still when I came back yeah. like, we get it like you had to do your own thing but like we've always been your friend and and like actually like that was the saving grace when I felt yeah. when I broke my arm and and fell from like the community I was in that was the second time that happened to me two different circles of ayahuasca people and I felt like the rug had been pulled from beneath wow. me and like that actually all these people that maybe at one point told me they were my best friend and they loved me and they would always be there for me were not actually there for me and when I needed people it was my family that came through and saved me and all my really close friends from way back who don't even see me that often who who came through um and it's it was a real recognition again of like no hard feelings like I'm grateful I expanded to the point but if you spread yourself too thin you can't possibly be having the deep connections that you're looking for if you like root and have like some strong deep like trusting like relationships with people that have known you your whole life and stuff like that so mm-hmm. I'm now coming back to those things and like building from that place and like I'll be very careful from now on who yeah. to like, let into my experience ever again and that's not even a place of fear it's just a place of wisdom it's just like I'm I'm content I know what I want to do now it's just a matter of time there's almost not enough time in the day so like to like do everything that you could imagine you'd like to do when you start doing it that's so interesting I mean wow it's amazing that you were able to come out of the um like I guess a bit dogmatic view of like everyone should be you know because yeah you know again it's the same it's moving through it yeah Yeah. I think it's 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 a similar repetition of the religion thing for me because I was brought up as a Christian as a child but then my dad wasn't Christian my mum was and then I was always questioning in it so then I have to go on my own journey to kind of work out for myself yeah. um, and therefore kind of fell away from it and then came back to it and then fell away from it again. And yeah, I don't know the, the similarities between ayahuasca and um, religion for me and my take has been Christianity because that's what I was brought up with. So I've read the Bible, actually. I had a spiritual awakening when I was about 21. I went to a church oh. and someone prayed for me and I just had like a shaking, crying fit twice in one ceremony and just like just screamed and cried for like 30 minutes with mental. It was like someone just like, flooded me and the holy spirit entered my body and i was cleansed and then i had like six months of feeling like i was a child like no drinking no smoking completely pure no sex i was just played in church every weekend and then then i started getting the crave to like go back off and travel and do ayahuasca and and play music and so i did and then kind of had to go back into it and felt like i'd gone against god again and like all of these sins wow. and, like, all of, the guilt of like feeling like i found it and then gone from it and like i felt like i'd like I was like, there's a story in the Bible where if you like, if you find God and then you fall from grace again, you're like the worst of the worst. Like if you're, if you're sinning and then you choose to come to God and then you fall off again, you're completely done. And I, I was then in that place in ayahuasca doing ayahuasca, like in Sri Lanka doing ayahuasca, like, oh my God, I was perfect. I was at one with God and I've chosen to like have sex again. And I'm, I'm here and sinning again and like going through all that process of guilt and shame and yeah. all that and carrying all of that all the time. And then seeing that same thing showing up in the ayahuasca community of people being really perfectionist about how they dress, how they look, how they perceive of others and how they want to be perceived. And then how they present themselves, the words they say, like all of these cliche things that then become like a religion. And I'm just seeing the same thing play out. And then yeah, I just see the similarities and I see like the, the realization of Jesus Christ and what he actually came to stand for, which was for me, he was a spiritual rebel who came here to tell everyone you're doing it wrong. It's not about any of these fancy clothes, fancy buildings, any of this. God is within you. It's within me. I'm the child of God. I'm perfect as I am. And I'm here to tell everyone that that's it. Like, And then he was kind of, if it's true, killed for that. And it's kind of like, yes. for me, the same sort of yes. thing. That It's almost like people are just, who can wear the fanciest whites? Who can wear like the most beads and like where it sing the most like jungle mantras or something that doesn't make you more spiritual or like if it, it's it's you and your personal connection with god which is real and how you treat other people and it's like and i've seen so many people they treat people really nicely on the surface in one light and then you see them behind closed doors and they're not nice to people and i'm like well i know the truth there like you're not being real all the time and it's like yeah there's, there's a lot of fakeness and there's a lot of um the same yeah. thing parables just acting like they are better than because they've got more fancy things or they've got the textbooks yes. that and the fancy buildings and it's like no it doesn't make you better spirituality yeah. is not about any of yeah. that it's 
it's about being humble and real and actually getting on your knees and like being of service to God. Like the whole, the biggest thing that is, which is you are part of, but like you, you're not mm-hmm. better than anyone. And I think I'm seeing the same things play out of like yeah. hierarchy and I, I can't stand it. And that's one of the main reasons why I can't be part of it as much because I just don't want to be seen as better than anyone else. It makes me, it makes my skin crawl carrying that sort of like, um, expectation of myself like I've got to be perfect like can't do that I don't want to be perfect I'm not perfect and I'm happy to be imperfect and to own that I don't want anyone ever to put me in a box of being perfect and like representing anything angelic or anything because that's not me I'm human I'm a dirty human which is what I'm meant to be like I'm here to learn the lessons the hard way and to be perfect in some moments but sometimes I'm not always going to be like that chosen one and and I've, I've carried that for a while and, and I'm glad to not have that on my shoulders anymore and just to be like I can breathe like no one's watching me I don't need to be like every word I say perfection I can I can well, fart you know what I mean I can swear I can do I can smoke a spliff if I want to it's my life I'm yeah. free I can do what I want like and there's a freedom in that and wow. I'm holding on to that hard like yes freedom man but uh, thank you so much for sharing this like I feel like this is such a uh, unique insight into like what happens within the circles you know um, hmm. I feel like it's like there's almost like a pressure going on and everyone's like keeping up this thing in some ways but obviously it's not everywhere it's not always like this but this is why it's so important to be aware and to see and like it's amazing that you have the insight now to see it because yeah. you, otherwise that's that's when you do get stuck in it but like you say you, you get it and then you move on mm-hmm. but you have to go through it but mm-hmm. what I feel like from what you're saying it's almost like the kind of like the darker aspects of it's not it's not just plant medicines it's in the spiritual community it's the same yeah. same themes the same framework that you said that's playing out and i feel like from what you said previously um when we met noisily just yeah. there's also the other theme that's running and it's just like not being able to confront the shadow yeah. you know with the way that um you stepped away or the yeah. carpet was pulled from you know what i mean and that's the thing, I think, like, wh- however far you go, however deep you go, however many people you surround yourself with, however popular you are, however famous yourself, the truth will always remain that when you're alone at night by yourself, you face your demons. And, like, when you sober up, you're going to face everything that you don't want to look at. You can hide from that as long as you want. I've tried. I've tried. It doesn't work. And eventually you will have to face it. And no one can do that for you. And, like, it's just one of those things that, like, you can mask it for as long as you want. And and you can look really happy doing it. But I've it's ironic that I've looked the happiest in my life when I've been the most unhappy and then fallen from that place. And now I don't even think people even probably get where I'm at. I'm like, great. I don't even care because I'm actually happy. Like, I'm actually doing what I want to do. And it's just like a, a real thing now. Like, it's just that's that's the most important thing to hold on to my well-being so that I can not like hate life and actually be real and love it and then be mm. give what I can when I can and like mm. from that enjoy my experience because it's mine I, I was born here for a reason and I'm lucky to mm. be but yeah it's 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 nice to talk about it like I feel like I've just been like swept up in a whirlwind and it's ma- it's amazing I, I would not change a thing and most people who know me probably have no idea about the depths of expansion and experiences that I've been through. And I don't even care or need to prove it because it's like, it's all you at the end of the day. That's the thing. It's like, it doesn't matter who you tell about or who even sees it, whatever. It's a personal experience. And the deeper you go, the more you might pull back, but you might also get lost in that. So like, it's always just like you and you alone, like you're against yourself in a weird way, but it's not, that's no competition because it's you just bettering yourself. And everything even the darkest shadowy experience was will make you better that's the ironic thing like you might become the worst person in the world this isn't this didn't happen to me but you might end up doing something really bad and going to prison and spending 10 years thinking about how you did something wrong and that could actually evolve you into like the most like enlightened being in the planet i truly do believe that like yeah the shadowy lessons are like where you learn the gold like when you plant a seed you plant it in the dark in the deep of like by itself and it grows into something amazing and beautiful new and fresh and it's like you need to have those experiences of darkness and and if you if you don't take yourself off and isolate and integrate then the universe probably will make you have that time yeah. like for me it snapped my wrist and forced me to take that yeah. time but yeah wow I'm gr- yeah actually and it's so funny to meet you noisily and we just had that quick time firing thing and you like podcast i was like all right yeah great don't overthink it and then you said this week i was like yeah let's keep noisily flowing like for me this is life for me i don't know who i am what i'm doing really to be honest i'm always just here yeah. in awe of like i'm still here trying to survive and make it the best experience but yeah all that is that i'm just yeah it's just like here for now who knows what's going to mm. be it's a pleasure mm. to talk about it i love talking about stuff like this because 
we're all going through it and I know a lot of yes. people are yes I totally and like I feel like one of Nibi was saying on the her episode like so many people now because ayahuasca is so common like and it's so popular yeah. so a lot of people who are first like on their awakening journey they go to that that's like one of the first things they go to and like for me it definitely wasn't like that I had years of meditation before you know what I mean like mm-hmm. and she was saying like sometimes she sees people go in and come out like a shell of who they are yeah 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 definitely yeah like, uh, definitely so it's just important to like to be aware to know that, what and have something to come back to yeah but like th- that's the thing that I always try to remember because the ultimate thing that I don't like is that I've seen in ayahuasca that I've seen in religion that I've seen is when people start pointing fingers telling other people how to do anything because mm-hmm. actually at the end of the day I don't think anyone knows anything and we're all yes. making up and like even the people at the top don't seem to have a clue and I'm like yeah. I'm just kind of just like Yes. in position that I believe that there's infinite ways to climb the mountain and you can you can reach enlightenment through anything mm-hmm. and you can find what you're looking to find with whatever subject you choose and that might not actually be something that other people agree with but if it's real for you it's real for you and it's like at the end of the day that's why I always come back to see it of like I have no hard feelings to be honest with it I'm I've been through hard times but I don't really pin it on anyone in particular I'm grateful to have gone through my own healing to like have forgiveness for everything and gratefulness because actually all the hard things made me so strong and like all of the difficult relationships made me so much wiser and like all of the pain helped me to enjoy the pleasure so much more so it's like yeah it's always hard to say what people need but yeah I've seen that and and it's maybe not for everyone and not everyone maybe needs to take ayahuasca or or send their consciousness to outer space and come back because it might be quite hard for you to integrate and handle I was a musician living on the road free as a bird I and I still struggled but if you're living in a life where people don't get it around you and you're coming back to a job and a girlfriend who doesn't agree with it or something I don't know it might be very difficult to integrate that and I'm probably gonna guess that it might all fall apart and you'll then be forced to kind of do what I yeah. see a lot of people do which is then find a whole new career live in a van or something like you have to completely reshape what you're doing and that is not for everyone potentially yeah. some people though everyone's different and some people take the medicine and they just go back to the job and it makes them better at it like it's so hard to say I've seen hundreds if not thousands of people take the medicine and I've heard hundreds if not thousands of people share their experiences and every single person is unique everybody has their own experience some people get rocked they go to hell and they'll never come back again some people come and they love it and they'll be back every month for the next few years it's like it's hard to say and I always try my best not to worry too much about what they're doing because I can only hope and trust that they are doing what's right for them Like, but yeah, it's a big responsibility to take on. That's why I'm choosing not to be part of it as much anymore. But I'll always be a musician, whether you see me at a face, uh, festival or an yeah, SM. I love it's, that. I'm cultivating to share. And I, I hope that I can be present in every space to help as many people as possible. So, love it. Yeah. Just Don't wanted want... to touch on uh, what you were saying about community because it's so interesting, right? At Noisily, there was this talk that I attended, and the um, person was saying, like, uh, community, like, it's kind of painting this idea of wanting to be in a community and be surrounded by like-minded people in like yeah. bad senses so it might be like um attached to ego or something right yeah. and uh and I just thought it was really interesting and it was they were saying like you know if you do that like you know everyone's going to be on the same thing so you're not really challenging yourself because da, da, da. Yeah. but I was kind of thinking like well I don't know have you been in the community because no matter what community you're in it's tough like so much comes up like like you were saying I love that you were like uh I don't want to be constantly surrounded by other people processes like you know (laughs) yeah difficult you know it doesn't matter if you're on the same you know Mm. like-minded you know Mm-hmm. I feel it right. helps it might help for a moment it's like Bob Marley so he says like you, you can run away from yourself but you always find yourself eventually like it's like you might find people in the breathwork community that like help you to ignore what you just did in your previous relationship for six months but then it's probably all going to come back up eventually and probably happen again with someone else in a new way like your little patterns will always resurface I think we're like infinite fractals and like unless you start to learn about your own fractal patterns you're just going to blame everyone for the rest of your life and it's like eventually you've got to realize your patterns are yours and you've got to kind of maybe learn to love them and but yeah it's a difficult uh thing to even like know really this whole subject for everybody because everyone's so personal Mm. but yeah I'm so grateful I've done it and like I I don't know if I would do it again if I had the choice like if I could go back in time and like go back into but then I think everything would have naturally happened anyway yeah yeah yeah, for sure yeah I do believe in fate and it seems to be but the community thing is so interesting because I feel like 
um, I mean, one thing that I did say, which was uh, which is quite true, is like, what about the community you have now here? Oh yeah, so the community thing. So I, I went straight from that. So that was actually one of the biggest teachings that I've come from. So like, I grew up wow. in Yorkshire with yeah. my mum and dad and my sisters and local community, good friends. And then I went off traveling and kind of learnt my own way. And I went to live in Sri Lanka, so I was part of community there. And then I was living in the van, and I ended up living in a community in Wales for a bit, and then one in Glastonbury for a bit. I don't know if they were proper communities because I've heard of the stories from other people and everyone's had their own. But what I have heard from most people in communities is it gets a bit hectic and there's a lot of stuff coming up and everyone's relationships are intermingling and it gets quite intense. But it can also be really healing and beautiful and depends on the people and that. But for me personally, yeah, I've come full circle to realize that I was avoiding the work basically because I, I wasn't coming back to my own community. I was born, well, I was born in London, but then my family moved to Yorkshire at six years old. So that's now where they are based. And that's where all my friends are and all my teachings are and all the people that I tried to run away from when I was like 18 to just be like, oh, fuck this, I'm leaving it all behind. That, that I can just do it, start again. But I was avoiding the ultimate hard work, which was come back, integrate everything. Like, it's so easy to like be a spiritual person surrounded by people who love like breath work and, and like taking psychedelics and, and being vegan and stuff because you're just all on the same level. Whereas you try and have those conversations with your grandma and your mom and like and like just normal people and just like trying to integrate that back. That's why I'm realizing it's like my old ultimate goal now and the thing that I was made for I think is to go out to experience something new and then to bring it back home and I was avoiding that the most because it's the hardest thing to do like I literally at one point like tried to replace my family I like found someone else like you're my new spiritual mom like this is my dad like I don't need my family anymore I'm like I'm, and I see it all the time people get a new name spiritual name I'm not saying it's a bad thing whatever do you process it's you but like ultimately I'm blessed because my family is still together my mom and dad are still together they didn't divorce and I realized not many people have this opportunity to do this like I actually do so I can come back into a, a community that's actually been here since I was a child my sister's now just had a baby six months ago when I saw that baby being born it really opened my eyes to my responsibility to be here with her and that baby is half it's kind of mine as well it's like it's like a community responsibility for me to be there but I was constantly jet setting off to find other communities and and sculpting them and and kind of being like oh I only want those people in this space and I don't want anyone else and if they don't like that they're not allowed in that's a cult that's not a community I think a community is something where you accept people for their differences and that's been wow. the thing that I've had to do like coming home and and like not agreeing with everyone living in the same household with people who eat meat when I was vegan and stuff like this or and then it's switching and all these different things but like mm. that's what I've ultimately come and the code big thing for me was that learning as well it's like it's not my responsibility to tell you how to look after yourself or to protect yourself and you're not meant to tell me that either it's my choice and you should leave me to do that and that's actually something that I learned through my family I didn't have the vaccines most of them did I didn't try and argue with them about it they didn't argue with me we let each other do our own thing and there's a mutual respect there and it was, it was the beginning of it because at the start I was like what what's going on I can't believe it and now I'm just like I'm so grateful that we didn't argue about any of that stuff and whatever we chose we respected it and it's like and that's where I'm at with it now it's like the ultimate community is like going into my local schools, going into like seeing my sister once a week, to see my baby sister, like my my like little nephews and like those things, like regularly checking up on my mom, going out for lunch once a week. Like like these, that's community. That's my soul family, really. And I was like searching for it outside of myself because I couldn't bear it to face it back here because it was so hard for me to see those reflections. But, mm. and it still is, like, it's still hard, but I'm sat at my mom and dad's house right now doing this like interview. They, when I came home and broke my wrist this time, I was honest with them. And I said everything I've been through and like all the stuff that I've been doing. And I was like, it might not be easy for you to hear, but you created a beautiful child. And like, when did that change? I'm still that beautiful child. And like, I've not been dishonest. I've just journeyed and traveled through life. And this is what's happened to me. And I'm now back here and I'm ready to kind of integrate back into this experience with you. It's terrifying to even tell you what I've been doing, but it's real. And I don't want to be separate anymore. I don't want there to be one version of Joe that everyone else knows and one version of Joe that you know. I want there to be one person. So I'm not split and I want to be honest and I want to be real. And that's been the hardest lesson this last year. Not wanting, I've wanted to run away so many times, go back to Shranka, go back to like living in a community and just avoiding it. But it's like, that's the biggest work that I've been doing recently. And that's what broke my wrist helped me to find love for my family. But like, they're not perfect, but they fucking love me. And they will always love me for being who I am and not for who they want me to be. Whereas I go back into these circles of people sometimes, I'm like, they only like me when I do certain things. They only like me when I talk certain ways. Like they're not, they don't love Joe. They don't actually love Joe who he is all the time. And that's what I need. And that's what the community that I'm, experiencing is now starting to give back to me because finally I'm actually being able to love people for who they are not trying to change them mm. and that's like the hardest thing like to not try not try and change your mom and dad not try and change just accept them and see what, that they're there at where they're at 
And it's like, you are at where you're at. And if they can love you for who you are, you can love them. And that's community. That's putting your hands around everyone and not like being like prejudiced or, or like choosing only certain people who eat certain foods or wear certain clothes. It's like, no, we're in this together. We are one family. And my community is where my local family is. And for me, I'm, I have that to go back to. So that's what I'm doing. But yeah, it's not the same for everyone. Like I say, some people need spiritual communities. They need family because they don't have that support network. But the biggest teaching the medicine has given me in the last year was like, you, your dad is a template for masculinity, which is actually very rare on this planet. And you need to recreate that. And you need to create your own family unit. And you need to have a support network for kids to create the space for them to be the same creative person that you are and to teach people about that. And when my dad dies, to step into his shoes because he's an f- absolute legend. And actually, I've been so hard on him and he's not perfect. No one's perfect. And I've always heard like a patriarch or this and that. They did their best and they are amazing and they're not going to be able to do the same things that I can. And my kids will be even better than me, but it's just like in different ways. Like I can't do the same things that they can do. So it's just like community is that seeing everyone's flaws and their strengths and allowing people to stand up in their strength and then not beating them up for not being able to do everything. We all step up in our own ways and hold it for each other. Like it's not about being the best of everything and just like that's that's the problem I find with the the ego level of like society or the communities or the cults or the whatever you want to call it it's just like if it's all on the ego level and you're not just actually doing it to just your own well-being and help other people be happy and support like it's not a competition it's just survival in a way we're being we're just we are being lied to and manipulated and fucked with all the time last thing i need to do is fight with the people around me Mm -hmm. and like be in conflict with those people and and trying to compete with them it's just i want to be at peace i want to be supporting them Mm. and yeah giving a lot of energy to the kids and showing them the way as well and allowing them to have the freedom put into them before they get all the negative fear put into them and just be like you can do it I've done it it's not hard it's not it's not easy but like keep doing mm. it like, don't give up on that dream that's real like it's yeah. the only thing that is real what a freaking journey wow yeah I, I love what you said about community it's such a good point because it's almost like we can try to escape but like no matter where we go we're always in a community it doesn't mm. matter like and I think this is like one of the challenges of our time, especially now since 2020, is just being able to accept people where they are, as they are. And it's awesome. interesting. Yeah, accept people for who they are, even the difficult parts. And everyone talks about the shadow, but it's like, can you love someone else's shadow? And maybe you can only love someone else's shadow for a certain amount of time till you actually come to a point where you're like, do you know what? You've taught me enough to realize that I don't actually need that in my life because you're hurting me. And yeah. that's your process. I do love you. I accept you, but you can't keep doing this to me. Yeah. I have to cut you out in a way. And that's still love. It's just but like, yeah. yeah, you know, a hold space with people's shadow is a difficult thing to do. And I'm getting better, but I'm not very good at it. But I've had beautiful women in my life do that for me. And like my partner right now, she she holds me in my darkest hour and loves me in the places that I didn't think were possible. And it helps me to see that it's possible to love those parts. And and then actually when I see other people acting out, like my dad and my mom, seeing to the root of it, it's like, yeah, but there's actually some real deep, trauma yeah. going on there which they don't maybe even know they're aware of and i'm not being patronized thinking i'm better but it's just in that moment like i think that's the thing yeah. the medicines or this experience it starts to like they call the neural pathways and then rather yeah. than instant judgment it's instant understanding of like yes. maybe and just empathy. be kind to them right now like just say yes. yeah yeah you're right it's all right and yeah don't aggravate it you don't always have to be right you always have to be it's like just let them have their process sometimes and and yeah it's just but that's it I don't think anyone likes doing it and I still find it hard so I'm not living with my mum and dad now I've moved out and I've got my own space and come, come see them regularly but I don't want to run away from that that's the hard yes. work it's the beautiful thing no but this is what I love is what you said and it's almost like you know you go on the journey and it takes you all sorts of different directions and paths and discoveries and then it's like you have to come back back home to integrate you have to come back to like let it all land in a way yeah. you know yeah and build like as a man I'm I now want to build my own template using everything that I've got but like I started to realize that it's like I can't follow in anyone anymore because my template isn't that it's like I'm here to now create my own thing and my own family network and my own community and it's not everyone like not everyone's gonna like it everyone has the different flavors and cups of tea you know what I mean but like all I know is if I'm authentic to me I'll be a beacon of that and then I can grow around it and it's more stable and solid for then creating space for other people to then go on their journeys. And I'm seeing it more and more. People come to me and I'm like, oh, yeah, I can finally like be grounded and solid and mm-hmm. space for this person's creative process rather than me being that person always traveling off and doing the next thing. It's like, yeah, for me, it's a fatherly role that's coming through. It's just like it's that fatherly role of like I'm starting to feel ready to 
hold uh-huh. space for other people's process. And I think it started with me learning how to love the community around me, like my mum and dad, my sister. And, and because I can only imagine when I have a baby how frustrating it would be, but I would be so much able to just like sit with them and like be present and and not like judge them and not like be annoyed with them crying. And stuff. All of this ultimately I think is evolution and it's helping to create yes. more conscious beings, isn't it really? That's ultimately what we're all working mm-hmm. towards, I think. Yeah, but I love it. It's so freaking cool. And I love the, it's just, it's the, it's like you choose your family, right? Or you don't choose your family, whichever perspective. <laughs> yeah. But like when we're here, sometimes we can seem so different. Like there can be, it just seems like there's so, so much differences. And like in a way, that's why sometimes maybe we feel like we have to go out and explore and find other people that are more similar to the, but then yeah, yeah. this coming back as well to you, you can't avo- like avoid where you came from. You no. can't avoid the lineage, the ancestral line. So it's just like actually, and I also had the similar experiences through 2020 and the injection. But I'm also so grateful that my family have been so accepting, you know, yeah. and we've heard some crazy stories about other people who are just cutting people out of their life. And... It breaks my heart. Like, it's horrible to hear that, isn't it? Because that's this... ultimately, that's the division which you don't want. Like... Exactly. And this is the, and I love the way you are terming it. It's like cultivating the community, you know? Yeah. I used to be so like anti-government, anti like conspiracy theorists, like fluoride in the water, like hemp's illegal. I, I was so on it after uni. Like I just spent loads of time researching like hemp and fluoride and like, and I got into it in a big way. And then I started trying to convince everyone that like the world's fucked and like we need to change. And But what I did was isolate myself and just like completely alienate myself. And no one wanted to hear me because I was always so like, ah, shouting about this stuff that I thought was so important, but not really giving space for anyone's process of just surviving in life. And like, that's the real spiritual work is just being alive, just being a person, just like having that breath and like being able to not snap at like your, your cousin when they've just come in and just like spilt over the water. Like it's just these tiny little moments of life of like being compassionate. And like, that's what spiritual practice eventually is, I think. And it's, it doesn't matter. I used to think I had to do yoga two hours a day. It's like, no, I don't even do yoga anymore. I just, I am yoga. Like I yes. am, like, I am just living. And it's like, take a breath in every yes. moment connect to my body in all the times and I think all of these things are gateways to help me to just ultimately be more of a like all-rounded present person who can actually just take on the really difficult experiences of life and transmute it into love and not get it like and take it and turn it into like boiled energy and just spit it back out everyone and make the situation mm. worse which is so easy to do but yeah it's it starts with you and then you start to start to love your people around you I think and then that's what I'm now starting to realize is like, oh, now I can actually create my own human. And then I, then I have free reign to like mm. raise that child how I choose. And it's like, that's a massive yes. response. See how, yes. see how easy it is to be righteous all the time until you've done that, I think. Because that's what my dad always says. You will never know love until you've had a child. And I don't, I've not had a child yet. So I can only even imagine the depths of love that I'm going to experience. But right now I'm focusing on creating the environment and creating like a space where I'm feeling solid my partner's solid we're both creating and not just working to survive we want to be living and living well and creating things that actually yeah. uplift us and support us in abundance and yeah, that's yeah, in yeah. the place that I want to bring a child and then just be like yes. look at your mum and dad we we never sacrificed our love we are mm. doing that what we love and making everything work through that sort of thing and I just want to like be a representation of that mm. and then that, I can only imagine what that child's going to be doing probably le- le- levitating to school <laughs> who knows <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, yeah, I feel like ultimately family, it all comes down to family. It's so important. And I remember, yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah uh, hearing something a while back, and it was like the new church is going to be family, family oriented. And what you're describing, it sounds exact. This is like exactly it. Yeah, I think so. And I've recently been trying to disconnect from technology more because yeah. I can put my hands up and say that I've been addicted to it, especially like Instagram facebook and stuff like it's i think i don't think i i don't look into things or read things and stuff but i can just see from my own experience that like it's affected me negatively quite often yeah. and it can be really positive because i can share what i'm doing and i yeah. love that and as an artist yeah, who's same. independent i have to do that to share yeah. people where i'm at and then yeah. but the hard thing is to share something and then not get attached to if people like it and how many yeah. people will look at it and stuff oh yeah, yeah recently i moved to a new house and i just purposefully there's no wi-fi at the house and there's no signal at the house so when i'm at home there's no reaching me and it is the best thing i've done in a long time because i'm yeah. free I'm just drawing at home painting you couldn't get in contact with me if you like unless i'm out the house and i'm in work mode and then that's when i'm yeah. on call and that for me has been helping me a lot and it's just um yeah that's that's something that i don't think people take enough realization in it's just mm-hmm. like we're being constantly distracted and we're being know, constantly God. separated in our thoughts and like look over there look over there look at this buy this but it's just like if you can just like come back to just none of that and just like wake up and be like what do i want to do today 
And then actually someone's processing like my girlfriend next to me. It's like, oh, she's in something. I, I can just be with her. Like, it's fine. It's, I haven't got a hundred thoughts going through my head of how I need to take over the world and be the next like James Bond, Krong Bin mix. Like, it's just like, I, I don't know. It's just like, I can just maybe relax into just being a human and just realizing every moment is amazing. It sounds so cliche and stupid, but it actually is so simple like that. It's like, breathe. Yeah, I'm I mean, here now. Like, I felt the technology thing after noisily because I wasn't on my phone much then. Yeah, and mine then, died all weekend and I was yeah. happy. And then I came back and I was even just looking at my feed, just like, what is this? <laughs> it's a difficult balance though, isn't it? Because then you've got the the, the 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 things of society which are always pulling us into that. Yes. And that's what I'm realising. It's the balance for me. It's exactly. just like, do you want that? I want a calendar full of things Monday to Friday. I want to be busy. Just like a flower. Like everyone has a purpose. We all have something that if you can naturally give all the time without like draining yourself and just be a, like a harmonious cycle of giving and receiving, then you will be part of natural law and you will therefore just like help to bring everyone else up around you. But you have to get the balance right so you're not giving too much. And like when I was in the ayahuasca scene, I was giving too much and around people who were constantly giving too much. So even the people holding the space, I would say were kind of exhausted and in their own massive process and they, they probably could have done with a break and I could have done with a break into the point where my wrist broke and gave me a break it's like there's sometimes like the balance of of life is the most important I think like if you want to help other people I'm realizing for me to be more solid grounded and able to show up for people I've got to live that life most of the time and I think it's just natural as you get older that's what I feel like you, mm. I don't want to just like go off and go crazy all the time and have parties and travel and not have any sleep anymore it's just like no, I actually want to go to bed early and eat really well and like make sure that I'm like in a good routine so that when things come my way, I'm like, yeah, I can handle that. It's, done. it's just a whole different way of being, isn't it? I think like it's so funny. It's it's like, yeah, maybe we're just getting older. <laughs> yeah, it is that. It does feel like that. But yeah, and then taking it with grace, that's it. Like not craving. And I've seen some reflections recently of like meeting like 50, 60 year old men who are like still partying like they're 30 year old. And I was like, that's where I could be heading. I don't really want that. Because actually, you've got to be careful with the ayahuasca that you're not just replacing addictions of party. Yeah, what, yeah. New thing as well. Like, yeah. it's, I don't know, it could never end if you don't want it to. But like, I see that within my dad. It's like, it comes a point of like, you got to take responsibility and be a man and like kind of like show up for other people who and bec become something bigger than yourself. And it's always been scary for me because I was so self-centered. But I'm grateful to say that I've gone off and done enough to kind of be satisfied with my own achievements and now want to like give back and yeah that's it come back to who you are like give back and don't get locked in mm. anyone else's like belief systems or or repetitions or anything even if they're charging 600 pounds even if they're like telling you it's the only way like there's there's, there's infinite there's ways a lot to... of that yeah there's a lot of that and there's a lot of that and there's a lot of distortion in hierarchy and i i don't like it personally and i i'd rather take psychedelics by myself if i do it anymore and i like, take that experience for myself and if there's people that i meet who really i can tell would need that experience i can tell and i will guide them towards the people that i trust and there is still a place for it just like there is a place for mantra just like there's a place for exploring veganism there is and there always will be but it's just like yeah if it becomes a trend and everyone jumps on board as if they as if it's just like having a cup of tea it's not as simple as that it's a big experience to take on mm. but yeah it's I think also as well the responsibility with family and like creating a child like there's so much that you are changing in that moment do you know what I mean from all the work that you've done yeah and then like you know creating that environment mm. now moving forward it's like you know I think sometimes it's like oh my god I want to help people mm. and then you think you have to like do some crazy thing but actually there's so much with the simple act of just creating a family you know <laughs> that's what my partner's actually always reminded me about recently Aww. like she's a beautiful person and actually someone who inspires me every day she's like so amazing and so accomplished in herself to the point where she that's what she can see it's just like I can't change the whole world I get overwhelmed yeah. by it but actually I can create life right here in this space and look after what's around me and then cultivate some beautiful life here and then nurture that and like make sure that I create the environment that I want that to be in sort of thing and it's like yeah I'm I'm it used to be the biggest fear of my life having kids and now I'm actually starting to welcome it as like the most exciting part of my life and mm. it's terrifyingly beautiful uh but it's not something my sister always tells me don't rush into it Joe because I think any, everyone who knows me is just like don't you're not ready yet I'm there, I'm getting there because it's a massive thing like you say it's like one of the biggest things you could ever do I used to think the biggest thing was making an album like wow I've created something and it's like yeah you created something but imagine if you created a baby like that's like whew, next level that's something Slightly, no. And then that creates a whole new experience for them to then go through everything I've been through, probably go through the whole process of hating me in the next 20 years, to then come full circle to evolve better than I was. Like, yeah, I, who knows that will unfold. And I can only hope that I can be patient enough and, and 
understanding enough to not get swept up in it and just be like, that's yeah. the process. I'll just be yeah. a rock. I'm just, I know what I'm doing. Isn't it's all it? good. It's like a continuous practice, continuous mm. reminder, continuous flow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think with time, you come full circle enough times to know yourself. And then people can't waver you. Like I've seen that my dad, like I've come home so many times with a new craze or a new fad or a new religion. And he's just like rock steady, just like, yeah, nice one. Yeah. See you later, Joe. Like he just doesn't need it because he's got his self. He knows where he's at. And I used to think he was like almost ignorant. I was like, oh, he's never open to, I was like, never open to anything. He never wants to learn about one. But you no, know, he knows where he's at because he did that when he was younger. And now he's, he's at where he's at and he's at. And it's, wow, and it's yeah. ma- massively I used to feel sorry for people because I would always thought you have to expand and be better but I think there maybe does come a point in life where you just know who you are maybe other star signs or other t- templates of humans just are born with that knowing more than others because I've had to expand and learn about myself but I admire that and strive to be more like that so I can be more consistent and like more relatable to everybody and and, uh, and more stable so I can actually hold space for myself and everyone around me because yeah. I think that is the role of a man and then hopefully yes. then I like kind of like create a space for my partner Alana to create freely and and yeah. making a and that and then we'll just yeah. flourish and blossom naturally yeah. it's just about that in it yeah it's like stepping into the like divine roles that we are and you know what I do really love that, that what you're talking about the stability the home and peace like choosing peace because I feel like for me and and a lot of people have probably gone through this as well like I feel like I was living in a state of trauma and stress for a very long time, like from my childhood. So I didn't mm. know anything else. So yeah. then that's how maybe why sometimes you might end up in those places where it's like, I don't know, we're in the plant medicine ceremonies and it's just like, ah, and you're used to it. Like it's yeah. just normal. Yeah, then, yeah. And then I'm, it's just so amazing to be able to like step into peace even more and to just realize like you can choose that you know yeah definitely that's something that I've realized like my, my like I say I feel like I've landed into a bit more of a peaceful experience now but it feels like I was very tra- traumatic for many years like all of my stuff was coming up and it was also being reflected back at me from people I was with like partners I feel like I had a few like deep trauma bond relationships which are really good for me in a long way because yeah. they actually helped me to learn so deeply about myself but yeah it's hard to go through that process and like yeah uh yeah it's it's an interesting thing to kind of see everything you don't like within yourself to then kind of like full circle realize I'm to blame just as much as them and then to like yeah with that process and to not blame because it's so easy to blame the other and to be yeah. like it's, we usually go through that process for a while be like it was their fault and then eventually I think you do come full circle and be like I oh, know I can see you'll meet someone who's like you and you'll see what they're doing and you're like oh no I do that too I can see how that's actually something that I do and like and then yeah it's just all that like deep knowing eventually of just like you're not perfect you're never meant to be perfect but if you can be kind to yourself you can probably be kind to other people and then you can start to like really forgive yourself and then forgive other people and then come back to that real simple thing we just said about the peace and like yeah like I say my partner Alan has reminded me that every day it's like you don't need to go out and, and take over the world to be like a hero you can be your child's hero like you can be like a massive deal in this environment and like massively influence the world it doesn't have to be so like huge all the time and like ridiculous we're all looking for that thing aren't we because instagram fame like the possibility it might be me but it's like do you really want that though it's like i don't know if i do after trying it for a while so i don't know if that's what i crave or want i don't want everyone knowing my business i don't want to be surrounded by people looking in at me all the time i want to create my own peace and i want to cultivate it and then i want to like kind of like help my family to spread it further and anyone who i come into me like my sort of life like I'll influence them in in natural ways if they're into it and like I don't know it's rather than looking outwards all the time I think it's just more just like just being content with your lot and like this is my my life I'm really grateful Mm. and it's helping me to come back to the present moment like rather than thinking about 12,000 ideas of how I can take over the world and create a new album to change the whole sound (laughs) of music I just breathe and remember I'm with my girlfriend right now. And if I just be really present with her, we yeah. both have a much better experience and life can be way easier and happier. It's just constantly bringing yourself back to that and just not letting you, with me, my mind, room, everything, mm. and take me off into like, and whatever you need to do to find that place is your thing. Like, that's cool. Like whatever it is, exercise for me, eating meat again, really grounds me. Uh, I've been really finding that helps me like smoking cannabis again for me is really that's always been my medicine whatever you need like like everyone has their own unique patterns and like things will soothe it things will help it and ultimately the aim I think is to become sober and I hope that I'll get to that place where I'm like completely mm. unreliant on anything other than just like my breath and mm. like, fulfillment I get from taking my kids to school and just being on point like I'm sure they will just naturally happen like it's just gonna happen because as yeah. things come my way I will just take on the challenge and be like well I can't I don't have time to chill right now I've got to go do all these other things yeah 
and I just know I'm yeah. but it's I'm grateful to go into that experience wanting it rather than being forced into it and that's that's a repetition in this chat I think and it? it's like choosing grace to be like that chapter's over I've had my 20s I enjoyed it I had yeah. fun I can now accept this step with grace and and have an amazing time I yeah. admire people like me who really love it and they're like yeah we're doing it we're being parents yeah. and not seeing it like a chore like oh I wish yeah. I was you I wish I was still traveling being free yeah, it's like no because it's also like sometimes a societal thing and it's the awareness because so many people do get into the relationships and thing and then they're just like doing the travelator thing and not really thinking about it much right kicking off a list of places to be and like just to say you've done it it's all about authentic experience so if you can cultivate that with anyone or anything like that's that's real that you're having your own thing it's not about anyone else getting it really either like but we always are trying to get that recognition from others aren't we like to help us to kind of feel accepted and, and and understood mm. but that's it i think if you can find it one person then you actually went in it's beautiful and that's i always come back to like god as a template can be found in anyone it can be found in a play a plant it can be found in an instrument it can be found in the eyes of your lover if you want it to be like they can be a constant reminder to bring you back to what is real and life and like all of the, the divinity can offer like and it's up to you what that can be like we all have the choice yeah man i love that this this is the, this is it i feel like yeah this like I could keep chasing that through music, but for me personally, I've cho- I'm now choosing through my life experiences to direct my energy actually into having kids and maybe living out my dreams through what they want to do a little bit more. And then like doing regular activities for them and their friends to come together and, and grow. Like mm. it's a choice. I could continue being a music musician for the rest of my life and put all my, that's, that's okay. It's fine. Like everyone has the choice and mm. the templates are there to follow, but you're, you're going to do it your own way, whatever you choose. Yeah, I like. I feel like it's like uh, just seeing everything. Yeah, like everything is God. Everything is sacred. Everything is a spiritual. Um, yeah, evolution. Yeah. Space. And even the stuff you don't like, like even the like, yeah. it's hard to talk about it. But like the worst things you can imagine, that's God as well. Like yeah. it all is. And like yeah. whether you like it or not, yeah. the Creator, yeah. everything is one. So yin and yang, dark mm-hmm. light. It has to be dark for there to be light. So that's why you don't want to focus on the news and look at all that all the time because there is loads of negativity, but. If you focus on that, then that will be your experience. Whereas you can choose to focus on yeah. creating and cultivating the positive alternative, which is the opposite, and that is light. And that's what you can start to become a beacon of. And yeah. I love busting for that reason. Go and sit on the street and play music and just watch people like their spirit lighten because they just see someone representing freedom and just doing what they love. It's like it's a massive thing. And that's mm-hmm. every time choosing to like feed the light rather than the darkness. And I think we can all do that in every moment. My partner's always like that. It's like just like rather than snap at that person just like Mm -hmm. choose to take a breath and be kind to them even when they're being mean to you right now that's winning that's life like giving you an opportunity to win in like every moment like it's not about being better or being righteous like I'm the best it's like it's like no like I just see the connective web and I just want the flow to continue through it all so that I can play my part and when I'm on my knees and I'm crying I need help I can only hope that there will be the people that I'll need to support me and like they always are do you not find when you really need it there's always some people Usually people you might not even expect, but that they're, they're there. The universe yeah. has got you back. So when you're good, you've got to do the same. Yeah. You know, one thing you said earlier about the choice, making the choice, and it got me thinking about the play of the light and the dark, because um, it's it's almost like you need to go into the darkness or you need to go into that journey of exploration to experience mm. it, to then come out of it. And then later what happens is you can choose and mm. you know, you know that it exists because you went through it. So you don't need to put yourself back in that place again. And you can just stay there, you know? Mm, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I had a real deep teaching coming through for me for the medicine, which I didn't talk to many people about because it's quite quite hard to even comprehend. But just the message that there's no such thing as right and wrong. It's all a matter of perception. And like, that's quite intense because it's like, in that space, you can do anything if you believe it's right. And as long as you don't think it's wrong and you're not going to be guilty about it, you can get away with whatever because it's all in your mind. Heaven and hell is a place in your own mind. If you can like live with what you're doing and feel like it's right, then you won't worry about it. We're all loaded with guilt and shame all the time. So like you, you're always like worrying about what you've done. And like, but if you can strip that back, there's no such thing as right and wrong. It's just perception. It's just like how you perceive it. Like for somebody, like a disaster happening might be the best thing in the world for this spring right here to get a fresh start to try it like there's always a yin and yang some people will benefit from the worst situation in the world uh, and like, it's just always difficult to understand but like eventually yeah i started to realize that yeah joe you can do whatever you want but like if you make bad choices then those repercussions will ripple back to you and yeah. i did start to understand that of like yeah i can do that i could do this i could get away with things but yeah that will then come back to you yes and it's that's what like you have to self-realize it's like yes. 
That is Everything true. will come full circle eventually. So you don't want shit coming back to you, really. So yeah. it's like my name is old, going around trying to like kind of make peace yeah. with everything might might have disturbed or something. And I've 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 hurt people along my path. But I'm I'm grateful to say that I feel like I've also shared equal amounts of love. So I've had the same come back to me. But uh-huh. yeah, I think now it's trying to level it out to be focused mostly on giving out the positives and sitting with the negatives at home by myself <laughs> yeah I definitely resonate with that like it's just perspective it's no right and wrong and but it's like that um quote every action has an equal and opposite reaction so you've got to realize that there are consequences to whatever you do yeah. and that's yeah. it and we, but, and we live in a confined it? society as well so there yeah. are rules and if you break certain rules you could go to prison and stuff like that so yeah. even if your mind tells yeah. you that's not that's not fair that doesn't make sense yeah there is we still live in a society so it's like there is all that's the reality of we have to always face reality at the end of the day you can go as far out spiritually as you want that's the concept but like reality we're living in this body on this planet and that's what always brings me back community like and that's grounding i want to yeah grounding yeah because i want there's a part of me just wants to just go crazy and take drugs and just be wild all the time it's like that's not grounding mate like you'll lose your mind you'll go crazy it's like you can't do that so it's like you have to realize it's like everything in moderation like how can I balance this experience where that I can kind of expand my consciousness in places that are safe and then come back to integrating it and then sharing the inspiration that comes from that and it's all everything's healthy in the right dose the right place the right time like everything can be abused if you do too much of it the wrong time the wrong place with the wrong people it's like yeah everything has its place that's the thing even poisons in nature have cures in them like it's like Mm. the other thing as well as about the good and bad what I find interesting as well there's it's also the good sometimes you think like uh, the righteousness oh this is the you know this is the right path because I think sometimes it's easy to see like what's bad but the Mm. good and then but then when you see that actually yeah neither of them is there is none of them it's just depending on the perspective then I just remember like not too long ago letting go of this like feeling like like this is the right way do you know what I mean yeah yeah because and it's just that a second takes a lot of pressure off to that yeah go. and it was just so liberating it was like oh my god yeah like mm. just with regards to what's happening in the world right you mm. know all these agendas da, 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 and it's like oh what's gonna happen and like other people who might be following it's like you know what this is the play this is the cosmic play yeah. and you can take your power back at any moment by not not having that thing of like oh what's gonna happen but like no i'm gonna decide what happens like, well yeah. for me anyways in mind it's like i'm gonna put the the positive af- um things in place that I need to do every day and I would say that actually c- comes across everybody like put in positive um habits so like f- practicing drums every day for 10 minutes meditating 10 minutes every day like taking in a breath before you speak every time you feel annoyed like little practices that you can start to add into your life these are all just like things that might help you to like make it through it with ease like rather than it just being friction and difficult all the time mm. Mm. yeah but it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it keeps going I don't think it ever gets easier though that's one thing I'm realizing for me anyway like it might get more peaceful and I might be better at not making the wrong choices so I don't add anything to me but life's always going to be a a ride and a rough journey at points and like there's nothing you even if you sort yourself out and you're completely solid you could have a heart attack tomorrow or like your your best friend could die in in the next 10 minutes like you really don't know and that's the thing the thing that's the thing that I don't think anyone can fully comprehend until it just happens and you're like that's what it's really sad that sometimes the most difficult things in life will make you feel the most enlightened and present and like yeah. real because oh I I fucking get it right now because like yeah. I've not I've not actually been putting the right things in order and priorities and stuff I, I haven't seen my mom for the last three months and now she's on the deathbed it's like whoa like the, the, yeah. that, sadly that's what some people have and life will always come at you from those angles but yeah. I think like that that's the thing like the ayahuasca the medicines whatever it is it's ultimately trying to get you to a place where you can handle life and and yes. not get reliant on the the community or any like substances that give you a glimpse of enlightenment it's just to help you to like unravel yourself mm. and then don't get too caught on it either because we've got infinite trauma that might never end like don't get lost in the healing process eventually you just have to accept that like that's what happened that's my story i know how to deal with it that's going to come up when those mm. things happen like yeah that you kind of know that to tell people and to understand it when it's happening but yeah, I think you can get lost in that as well. Yeah, totally, totally. You can't even see anyone else's process because you're always wrapped up in your own all the time. Yes. I've been caught just all about Joe all the time. And then you realise that you're just affecting everyone negatively because you're just not even giving them space or time to even speak because you're just putting your process onto them all the time. It's like, yeah, life is, uh, but it's going to be constant. So that's one thing I'm realising. So just keep on coming back to the peace and, and surround myself with people who can help me to find that. Mm yeah 
and having the tools to when those heavy moments and hard hitting things happen it's like someone dies to know how to deal with it you know mm. like how yeah. to actually process it how to you know or even just knowing when to read the signs that you can't deal with it and you need to isolate and take some time to just cry in a pillow and like maybe just like smoke weed for a couple of days and do nothing like sometimes you have to know yeah. when like you have to take a break as well it's just like tuning into what you need i think and not being hard on yourself like yeah. you're not making yourself it's like a fine line self-love like pushing through your mind and doing exercise when you don't want to or sometimes overdoing it and not yes. taking rest when you need to it's like there's a very it's always a balance of just like mm. you don't want to be doing nothing so you got to push through those mental blockages which like make you lazy but then you want to do enough which is like the ultimate like like level but not overdo it with all things in life i guess isn't it it's just like mm. like that sort of thing yeah. and i think that's coming back to that that's that's what i take from the community of ayahuasca the experiences of being in those places like the right sort of foods to eat the sort of practices you can do when you're going through a process and like breath work dancing yoga uh music and all these things that they're all tied in there's always all of that in there but it's just yeah it's just taking those things and then bring them back and i see that all the time and that's that's what always happens people come to the medicine then they start playing an instrument for the first time start writing poems start crying and uh, and then slowly you'll just unravel and like and I think you'll get the opportunity to kind of create again and like unravel through all of your sort of own personal experiences and transmute them into beautiful songs and poems and pictures so that they're not all heavy. They're actually beautiful realizations. And it's just that process. I think it, it's like, but you don't necessarily yeah, need anyone or anything to keep coming back to apart from yourself because yeah. it is you that you're working on basically at the end of the day yeah. and you're in this alone like and I yeah you can't keep holding on to everyone around you for like as if like a life jacket thinking they'll save you because they won't eventually when shit hits the fan it'll be you against yourself that you'll have to sort yeah. it out and that's what people I think will learn the hard way for themselves everyone does I think if life just has a harsh way of like grinding you down till you get the message so that's what true. I'm realizing. so true yeah that's and humbling funny. you isn't it and humbling you yeah yeah amazing thank you so much it's been such a great conversation just to learn mm -hmm. and so many like similarities like resonate with a lot of what you've shared yeah thanks for yeah just opening up the space it's nice to just be uh, asked to come and chat because yeah I don't do this sort of thing ever very often but I like to speak about stuff like this and it's like it's nice yeah. to just ride the wave of of where we're at as a consciousness and I do feel yeah. like I've tapped into some pretty deep experiences in the last three seven years I think and it's nice to be able to share because yeah yeah it, it feels like I'm getting it off my chest in a positive way because if if I tried to share too early on whilst going through those processes yeah. you would have got a different story to where yeah, I'm at now sure. it's coming through now and the full spectrum of what it's done and how it's helped and how yeah. it's shown me things yeah so it's great I'm really grateful to just be able to talk to you about it all bless you thank you I mean look, Georgie had the same thing as well she had such an abrupt moment and like just completely stepped away and then mm. I kind of waited. I only started this series like I don't know earlier this year, and yeah. I spoke to her now, which was a much better moment and place to talk to because she would have been in a whole different like mindset about the whole thing, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Life it just it just continues. It's like I just think of it as a wave, like we're all part of the same consciousness, and everyone's got yeah. their own individual waves. And sometimes they're massive waves, sometimes they're small, sometimes they're fast, sometimes they're like yeah. slow. And when you're in it, you feel like the most real thing ever. But then eventually you crash back into the realization that we are all connected. We are all going to die. We are all like part of this journey, yes. which no one really understands. And it's like, it seems to be infinite energy just yes. recycling through itself. And like, we are learning from each other all the time. That's yeah. for sure. And I yeah. love what you said. You tapped into the consciousness over like the past seven years. I feel like this is it. It's like when we share these stories and with each other, there's so much that we're all going through like we're all going through this birth canal you know <laughs> yeah and it's really really like good to see those for example in a ceremony when you've taken it the medicine and then the next day everyone has a integration process where they share their experience yes. to hear people's experiences for me that was like one of the biggest parts of the whole thing i'd just be sat there crying my eyes out listening to yeah. everyone because it's so real you go through everyone's life story and like what's happened to them and why they are the way they are and why the medicine's just gone straight into that pinpoint of like that's what it is that's what happened you need to start working on it and it's just like everyone's so unique everyone's so deep and then like for example if you maybe before that saw a reflection in someone that you maybe didn't like and then the next day you hear them sharing about why they are the way they are and you're like oh my god I judged that person like wow like they're amazing I love them like it's just like you really start to see yourself in them because you see that everyone's gone through it everyone's been hurt everyone's been traumatized everyone's been put through such difficult conditions and therefore they're just surviving and it's like 
that is the ultimate lesson I think you get from hearing everyone's experience. And you can probably get that just from doing sharing circles. I don't know, but vulnerability comes from breaking people down. And sometimes men especially need to be like, like mm. they're to be dissolved. And then they'll like share all of the weaknesses that they're carrying around and stuff like that. There's definitely roots in for everyone, different things, breath work, mm. yoga, like singing, like cacao, plant medicines, cannabis, like sex, like music, so many different ways can open people up. But whatever it is for you is a beautiful thing and then to be able to acknowledge that we are all kind of so similar and to see that within other people yes. yeah it's, it's a good thing to see it's a good thing to start yeah. to see you know what it's so interesting like as you're talking now it's kind of just getting like oh wow this is what happens in these these spaces and like how do we find places to be able to have that kind of like sharing circle as you said and one yeah. of my friends kept talking about podcasts and she kept saying like the podcast space I've started to realize the podcast space is like really powerful and I'm just like wow I never thought of it like that the podcast space and yeah. it's so cool because it's like in life like through these podcasts and having this series it's like this is one of those sharing circles you know yeah exactly yeah and you're just passing on like the the thread of consciousness as it continues to evolve and yeah I'm always in, yes. in the position to learn so like I hope that this will expand my knowing so someone might hear this and then come and speak to me a random place sometime and be like I heard what you said and I just wanted to say this and I'm like oh wow yeah. I didn't think of that like yeah. yeah it's all beautiful in that sense isn't it we're just expanding together and I always like to believe as well as like a trainee yeah. sort of learning master because that's what I see myself is I'm not the perfect thing but I'm trying to become that that's what I'm aiming towards it's like yeah you got to like kind of understand that everyone's on their own journey with that and like you can only share where you're at and you can only kind of like understand where you're at so you've got to be compassionate to other people and just and just like kind of know that ultimately you are here to better yourself there's no competition with anyone else and you can just love other people on the journey because we're all struggling and we're all like just like one foot after the other like oh it's so hard but uh, and it's so easy to snap at everyone on your way it's like ah you don't know what you're doing about this if you can get to the place where you're like cheering people on on your way up the struggle I think that's amazing <laughs> but, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not there yet but yeah my partner is teaching me a lot about that she's so good at that and and it's just different different skills that she we've focused on cultivating and I think we're now merging and yeah. I'm helping to she's creating yeah, more than yeah. ever and I'm helping to bring that out of her and I think she's teaching me about and that's it community ultimately you start to learn and merge the best parts of yourselves and, and co-create but yeah Pretty human hey <laughs> yeah it's it's an epic ride <laughs> <laughs> amazing is it is there anything you wanted to share with like someone who might be kind of contemplating stepping away from any of these things maybe using it like some of the plants as an addiction in some sense or mm. yeah. uh, well just be true to you like if you'll know how long you need to be somewhere and you'll know when you feel the craving to leave and if you feel that you should honor that basically so yeah don't always go along with the crowd because the crowd might be walking off the edge of a cliff so like you might want to just like make sure that you're reevaluating, popping your head up and be like is this what I'm really doing like uh, like re like get your get your reference points back and be like who was I when I started this where am I going what was my mission like because we are all one but if you lose your authenticity you're fucked like you gotta be real you gotta be you and there's only one person who can do you so you gotta stay true to that so uh, make sure that you're always coming back to that whatever you're doing whether it's exploring music maybe it's exploring tantra maybe it's exploring religion like whatever you're doing like make sure you just keep checking back in with yourself don't lose who you are because like your gift to this this world is to be authentic and to learn about other things and then to recreate from your place of authenticity and that's how we all develop and get better because you're adding to the whole it's like just make sure you come back to that and don't get lost in it because like it's so easy to and it's so easy to do that in so many different subjects like you can get lost in something which is not you and then you'll become someone else's like you become a cog in the in the mechanics of a broken system and that's not what you want you want to be like a flower through the crack of the concrete don't you? and just like come staying authentically true to you because you're always meant to be the flower that you were meant to be and all you got to do is remember that and give yourself the right conditions to heal and then to grow into the new ass like parts of yourself that have been stagnant but they were always there you know like, there's nothing that you don't have that you need it's, it's all within you you just have to remember that and anything that can help you to do that start that process is amazing but don't get attached or addicted to any of that because ultimately you have it all within you from the beginning anyway so you're just gonna re-spark that fuel and that fire and then let go of anything that helps and just like keep going and eventually you'll be waking up and just be like i am the power i'm the fire i've got everything i need like that's where i think we're all 
aiming to be. So yeah, no right or wrong. I don't want to slay anything or anyone, but there's always a way and there's always a way to leave. Like you've always got to eventually like know when to stop and to kind wow. of move back That's... to you. The infinite fractal that always, always was you will never ever mm. change. Mm. Mm. Powerful words. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, find your bearings. Yeah, and check your reference points. Yeah, and you know what? I think this is this is ultimately what I'm finding in through these conversations is is that it's just remembering like these things are tools and they're helpful and we can use them. But like mm -hmm. eventually, at the end of the day, like I love what you said. Like I want to just be sober, wake up, and have a glass of water, and that's all I need. You are the power. That that yeah. is it. You know. And then just don't be too hard on yourself because that's what your aim yes. is to get. Like yeah it's you don't, say that yeah you don't want to be like projecting that onto everyone like oh you're not perfect yet like no it's hard to be that and maybe it might take a, yeah. a long time for us to heal to get to that but that's where we're aiming and like like yeah it's yes. just it's just keeping that in mind i think yeah exactly 100 percent. be kind to yourself be kind to others and the, yeah. but the thing is remember like that that is the goal like that is the, the aim that is the point that is the yeah that's the ultimate yeah, yeah. Like, remember what was gifted to us like remember we, we, every day you wake up is a miracle like you are a miracle we've got thousands if not millions of cells interacting with each other responding like who can possibly explain anything that is happening look out the your window the nature is just ridiculous it's changing every day like we are like so blessed but like we're constantly being told that we're not we're constantly being put on pressure of outside external societal pressures and all that and the, the, there's a game to play that you have to kind of get to used to all that shit because it is part of it but that's not who you are you are an infinite soul which will never die like and if you can come back to these simple things of just like i'm so blessed even if i'm in a wheelchair even if i can't do this sadly the people who get those sort of ailments are usually the people who enjoy life more than anyone because they actually start to appreciate what they have still it's like don't be that person appreciate it while you've got it be alive like enjoy your life it's so easy to talk about it but like it starts every day just by trying to be grateful and like one of the hardest things I, i'm coming across all the time wake up in a bad mood and try and switch it around and turn it into a good mood and not let that control your whole day because that's so upsetting when you just wake up and you're in a bad mood and, every, and then you just go through wrecking everyone else's mood all day like it's so much better when I, I for example i'll wake up in a shit mood and i'll just do loads of press ups pull ups and then just like do some painting or just do something and then i'm just like oh i'm all right and then mm. i just just like it's amazing and then you just like mm. switch it and then you kind of just choose like that's not real i'm going to be positive and then you then someone says something to you and there's a negative thing comes no don't say that i'll say this and then it's just like those are the moments where you redefine who you are and like yeah. it doesn't matter if you do plant medicines or not it's like it's ultimately coming back to these very simple things you, simple, you yeah. from people who have done it to get these same messages you don't necessarily yeah. need to do it uh, as well oh, so yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if there's something going on collectively but i totally feel that with the negativity i feel like right now it's there's like a the, the light is so shining so it's like you can see where that you are being negative to yourself and really mm. just step into like maintaining this unwavering faith and positivity because i've also yeah. been every morning being like miracles are around the corner like every mm. morning like remembering <laughs> yeah it's like having that faith when you're being tested the most is the most beautiful thing it's really hard to do but yeah it is, it is the goal because eventually that's like seeing the master plan and knowing that even god himself her whatever it is the whole would test you and put you through trials and tribulations to better you and like ultimately it is going to help you to be better so it's like having that faith in the darkest times is when it's so important like it's really really easy to lose it at that in those moments but then you can just spiral into the absolute who cares nothing to lose whatever yeah. and then that's a dangerous place there's, there is so much to care for there's so much to be aware that's so beautiful on this planet look outside look at the nature look at the lambs look at like consciousness of a fresh child that's just been born like there is so much still to fight for and to live for and that's something that i realized like the, the modern war is not with war um swords and, and axes anymore it's like it's spiritual warfare it's like very much like manipulation and and there's a lot of stuff that we're not even educated on that you have to be very aware of like how to protect yourself how to protect other people and how to cultivate your own experience rather than being always distracted and led by others because then you can be the master of your own reality mm. and, and actually choose to have a beautiful mm. life and influence everyone around you and that's that's the power we all possess so true. i think so it's so hard to do though and it's so easy to talk about it but yeah again so it's your biggest fears do the work which is the hardest and you that's what i'm finding going into the most difficult things in the last year um has been the most rewarding and it's still hard to this day i'm still struggling but like i see the positive 
momentum starting to build. Yeah, and, totally, totally. Yeah. And I then, can only presume it's going to get better. Yeah, I totally feel that as well. Yeah. And, and just personally, from my own experience, it's like I can, I'm noticing now that I'm being more positive, like, and I'm seeing where this negativity comes in. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Mm. I can choose. Okay catching it early and just like replacing it with positive affirmations and then that's the same thing you do to others like when you catch them being negative it's like you can choose that moment as well as like they're being negative but i don't have to match that with more negative more negative yeah, just kind of like, just like not take that as an ego thing just like mm-hmm. okay and then just be nice it's just like it's, it starts with you and then it starts to like ripple out and like if you're nice to a person who's having a shit day it's amazing to watch you then change someone else's mood like do you know what i mean if you can do that and then watch them be like the cogs going in their mind, be like, oh, wow, I'm being a dick and they're being lovely. Like, this is like really confusing me. And it's yeah. like an interesting thing. I think that's what we can all kind of hope to do. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And I like what you said about seeing the bigger picture because uh, it's like uh, we all have goals and aspirations and like that's normal, it's natural. But then being being able to be grateful for what we have now, mm. no matter what no matter what you know and enjoy the journey because like if you're always looking to get to the goal then you don't actually enjoy the experience of getting there it's yeah. always the art, the art of slow travel so it's like if you can't enjoy the art the, of slow travel oh. there's a really good book called the art of slow travel i read that when i was younger it's really good it's about this guy who travels at like on a milk cart like five miles an hour around the world or england and he does it really slowly and it's all about like not getting to the destination it's about like the oh, journey to yeah. get you to it like every moment in between is what grows you into the person that you need to become to get to that destination so if you just get on the plane and arrive and that's it that's not much of a travel whereas if you enjoy every experience and talk to people all along the way and take mm. your time you'll become a richer person through the experience and is it that's what you got to remember and it be grateful for the experiences whatever yeah. they are it's like exactly. this is bettering me well this is it gratitude it's so powerful <laughs> it's like the highest frequency but can we remember can we do it or that you know constantly stay in that vibration you know and also check in, like if your life feels like it's hectic and it's all going wrong, maybe that's the universe screaming at you to change yeah. something massive. Like, and yeah. maybe it will continue to go like that until you step out of some relationship or out of some yeah. work job or something. Like, it's just being like aware of the fact that, that you're always in constant communication with the universe. I truly believe that. Like, and it's like I'm in every day, especially when I go busking, I like tune into this like flow state where I'm being told in every moment where to go where to sit when to move when to eat like yeah. I can just feel my intuition just pinging off in every moment and you just trust it that's what ayahuasca taught me of just like as well tuning in and trusting my intuition I used to be good at it as a child and then as an adult I started to question it but it's like when you get to that stage and you're kind of blocking your own flow and you have to kind of remember again that you've always known what to do just intuitively and mm-hmm. just flow with that and like, yeah, just, and if some people you meet, they might start blocking that. So maybe you'd have to be careful who you surround yourself with, because ultimately you want to be in tune with you. So you can just be you and then like find people who kind of amplify that frequency and help you to get it even further with their help sort of thing, not like make you awkward and block it. So there's always like, you're always tuning into what you need to do. And it's always there. And yeah, I've had it in the universe where it's screaming at me to change and I didn't hear it until it literally forces me to change. And yeah. then in the coming weeks, I'm like, why has this happened to me? Why? And then you you start to drip in all these realizations. That's exactly why it's happened to you because you didn't do all the things that we were telling you to do for the last three weeks. Like you should have stopped doing that. You should have stopped speaking to that person. You should. I was getting dreams about it for the last three weeks. Why didn't you do it? Why didn't you listen? Because you weren't trusting your flow, your intuition. You are God at the end of the day. So if you can tune into your, yeah. your God-given intuition then life will guide you to where you're meant to go mm-hmm. and he won't drag you through kicking and streaming that's what mm-hmm. i'm starting to realize because yeah. yeah. you're going to get there anyway it's your destiny yeah i feel like that's also a collective theme there yeah <laughs> there's key moments where you're just like this is bigger than me that's way bigger than me like yeah. sometimes there's a lot of mundane moments in life but even those are the ones you can really get yeah. from. but yeah but yeah mundane, like yeah and I think just learning that it, you don't need to put yourself through the freaking mud all the time <laughs> yeah and you don't have to pay money to do it either as you can just like Ooh. you can just yeah <laughs> don't need to go pay money to do a course or anything like and that's and we're all struggling in the same I feel like we're in like a narcissistic world where everyone's trying to be self-centered and like kind of make it for themselves and I don't think there's enough to go around for us all to make it uh, like there really isn't so it's like maybe eventually we have to accept that like we're going to come to community again and like 
and probably like survive and just like live in harmony and like live in like because like the, yeah the modern world's here right now we're infinite possibilities but is there really enough technology for everyone to become a rock star or everyone to do everything it doesn't seem that way like it's like there's only so much resources we have so eventually i think maybe some of these dreams might pop and people realize the, mir the miracle has always been in front of them but they were too distracted to actually just experience life for what it is which is just like right now and there's nothing more it's just being human being an organic human like just mm -hmm. living but yeah, yeah like even, sorry no go on go on even like in communities it's interesting that you said that like i feel like everyone is a rock star <laughs> yeah they all are a rock star yeah like when ever when you like around the fire you know just whoever wants to share it's you know when it is in a place where it's like not much ego going on and it's just authentic flow it's you can feel it can't you like when people are just like stepping up and doing it and it's a beautiful thing and yeah we are that's the thing we're all the creators so we all have it and mm -hmm. some people take their their moments and stand in the spotlight for longer than others but like yeah. we can all relate to other people and just because you're famous and getting all the coverage doesn't mean you're the best at what you're doing either like there's a lot of unseen heroes always isn't there like the bin so men like the, the everyone you can think of a million hundreds of people you know right now who are absolute legends and they get no recognition and but in that's in the whole scheme but like their kids see them their wife sees them and do you know what i mean i don't know it's yeah it's it's, it's all in the grand scheme but again if you can feel self-accomplished within yourself knowing that you're the best version of yourself then that's ultimately surely the winning perspective of just like i know i've done the best i could have done so i can sleep well at night just like simple really like I can't do more than I can do like and if I'm not doing enough then I know it and I've got these niggling things all the time like do that could do more than... so it's always just trying to get better and just like do do the most I can do and give my best but then also know when to stop and be like all right I've done enough I can chill I, I deserve to relax as well and like all of these fine balances that are just so painful to go through but I, yeah I can see it in the elders like my mom and dad they just love what they love they love what they do and they, they can enjoy simple pleasures and stuff but even they get swept up in technology and stuff so it's just like everyone's affected by the same things in different ways yeah so true. Defo. but yeah it's just uh even though we all have the potential to be the one I think there's a massive courageousness in actually accepting that you don't need to be the one to actually yeah. help everybody like yeah, you no. can actually be part of the whole in a well, huge way I mean that's something that I came back from noisily with as well mm -hmm. i really mm -hmm. felt that the collective like sort of a shared experience of we're all like kind of doing this yeah and also like so what if no one's watching you yeah what yeah missing? yeah or if there's a small group you know yeah <laughs> what if you do workshop and only one person turns up it's like well that was the one person who's meant to turn up so like yeah, yeah it's it's always that humbling thing. We all want to be that person and maybe some of us get it, but then actually what happens to most of the people who get it, they lose their mind, kill themselves, or they get oversaturated with fame and they lose who they were in the first place. So who knows if that's actually what any of us really, mm -hmm. truly want. We're just constantly told that's what we want. Mm. I think that's the, that's the trick of like ayahuasca and these things. They do just help you to come back to like the real simple presence and the miracles that are in everyday presence. And it's just like, presence is this clue in the name it's a present look it's the gift of life like you are literally present in the moment and that's a gift that's a miracle it might be taken away from you at any moment like everything else is just kind of like a dream that might manifest yeah and and i'm the biggest dreamer in the world so i couldn't tell anyone not to follow those things but ultimately i'm starting to realize that i can be happier if i can just do my dreams in my own time and then just kind of just like be happy that they don't necessarily need to reach everyone in the whole universe like exactly. they can actually my own self-fulfilled um prophecy and then on the other side i'm just here to feed my cats and like yeah and, and just enjoy my nice life like i don't know there's a there's a peace yeah. in that yeah there's totally. a man there's a massive gift in that as well of yeah. freedom because if you're free to explore what you want to explore regardless of if anyone's looking or not you're yeah. doing it. so if yeah. you're free you're free yeah. that's the beauty of it and you're going to keep better. doing it no matter what yeah. and how many people are actually on a stage performing in front of millions of people could probably say that they're still free. Yeah. It must yeah. be quite hard to maintain that like level of like, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. And I don't know. It's just like, yeah, so yeah, if you yeah. can get that in everyday life and simplify yeah. it down to just like making a cup of tea and being really present, then yes, you win yeah. it. No, but I, this is what I love because, and then you go, and then you open Instagram and you see everyone else chasing the thing and you're like, oh, I don't want to go into that. <laughs> Yeah, and it's almost like no one even leave, even has time to look at you anyway because they're so self-absorbed in what they're doing. And that's like the product yeah. of the society, it feels like. And I think we're all like craving to be acknowledged and to share what we've yeah. done. And, and it's understandable. We're all just like unseen children. Just like, please, someone see me. Like, Because I don't think any of us have really maybe been loved the way we, we yes. could have been, which is yeah. just like 
you're free do whatever you want create yeah. whatever you like like be you like yeah, we're gonna grow together like we've not lived in a world that was is fair like, i've known from since childhood that i this is not right and i'm not happy and i, I would say i've been constantly depressed since i've been aware because i'm just like wow. what the fuck are we doing like i don't need to take pills to numb myself to know that everything's wrong i'm angry for a reason because the world's wrong like i was born into a corrupt world it doesn't seem to make any sense but at the same time it does and I can only possibly make it better by bettering myself and then giving back to help to create solutions to fix the problems that I can see because otherwise nothing will ever change and it's just so easy to get lost in that like sadness of like why is it the way that it is but it yeah. is the way that it is so we might as well just accept it and try and hold everyone else up while we just keep moving forward to something better yeah. and like my dad's always told me that yeah if you can't think of a solution don't then you can't you don't, you don't really know what you're doing because like you can complain all you all, all the yeah. time but if you don't have something to fill that gap then it's not going to help so one step at a time even if it's just smiling at someone on the street when you're walking past them it's just massive help like it's it's always these little things that massively mm. every penny helps and it like adds up yeah man I, it's so fascinating i just think yeah i love it this journey it just always comes back down to relationships and the communication mm. and like obviously what's coming up for you internally but like how are you treating people like yeah. I feel like that's one of the biggest things and mm. and in so many spiritual aspects of the spiritual community you can see how like I don't know this big bypassing going on and and, it's just... and avoidance so like, yeah you can sit in a cave and get enlightened through meditation but are you helping anyone else yeah you might be but like you could maybe help more people if you like went into the thick of society and like kind of taught people about meditation so you like every day taught 100 people how they can meditate and find peace within their mind that's maybe more influential than you just finding peace of mind in your in yourself in a cave sort of things yeah I but do think, also yeah. finding peace in a cave is not the same as then coming back to your family and yeah yeah it's, it's almost like that was the last generation of like yeah. this process of like that's what we used to do because it was too to hard whereas now yeah. I do think like it's like all speeding totally. up and it's the people who are in the thick of it are kind of like juggling life whilst meditating. It's like, yeah. it's, it's that we are getting more intelligent. We're being able to do yeah. things at the same time, multitask. Apparently everyone's ADHD now. So maybe it's just the fact that our brains are like getting quicker and we're becoming like over stimulated by Maybe, everything that yeah. we're putting in all the time yeah. and therefore we can handle more like, it might take a while for us to get it as well but I think we are evolving still yeah like, like and it seems to be that like yeah the new monk isn't so much sitting by himself in a cave it's like someone who's like integrated into everything yeah. and just keeping their peace like that's yeah. it not letting yeah. anyone take that from you yeah totally which is so hard to do sometimes like mm. and that's what like with some of the most amazing teachers I've had have always said to me it's like like what we've been saying it's like it's easy to be enlightened um around these people but like go, go spend a day with your family because yeah, yeah. you that's like really hard work and but that's that's for me is the best yeah. work I'm realizing yeah like, but it's amazing that you have done that and so many other people had to do it with the lockdown and everything they were just yeah yeah forced upon us wasn't it yeah yeah that was almost one of the biggest teachings everyone coming back to their family and being like we're in this together like yeah yes. what if we can't travel anymore yeah 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 exactly yeah <laughs> we've been talking for a while now i know we're talking so long <laughs> but it's been lovely to just shit, like bounce off all these ideas yeah really really cool yeah and i'm Thank I'm you. super grateful to be able to share it because yeah i would recommend the experience i've been through but i am grateful to be coming out the other side of it and just being like Phew, that was heavy that was intense and uh yeah, yeah just settling back into some what I used to think boring life <laughs> and like really appreciating it and just mm. like having a really grounded way of living and mm. and actually seeing the beauty in that yeah definitely but I feel like there is a difference because I don't know you know before you might have seen people thinking that's boring but mm. then I feel like the depth that you've gone through brings in the awareness to enjoy it more you know yeah like when I was younger I used to feel sorry for people that I'd meet who didn't I like, want to expand their dreams and chase them and stuff so I'm like why are you not chasing that because that's all I know that's real yeah. whereas now this like new sense of realization comes through of like I meet someone who's just like got a job and got a family and got and they're happy and I'm like wow how are you just like content and happy with your situation and like just living life like that because like that's something now I'm realizing that I really want because I'm tired of constantly craving and grasping for recognition and fame and and all these things that come with it it's just like that's never ending and like I don't know if I ever okay. get anywhere with that really um whereas like when I now see people now I don't feel sorry for them anymore I'm like I am in awe of your like ability to like actually make the most of your experience and just love who you are and just like be happy because that's really hard hard to like accept where you are and just be like this is me sound like right? uh -huh. <laughs> make the most of it yeah. and be nice be kind that is it yeah be kind yeah. to everyone 
but then there's also people who do, are doing it and they're also not that happy so it's like yeah coming into that place really yeah I yeah I can relate to that as well and I've been doing what I thought I wanted to do like for example example playing music full-time yeah I actually was struggling with a lot of other things which was creating chaos in my life my relationships were hectic like my addictions were like not that great my I didn't have any stableness because I was always living in a van traveling all the time and actually I was really not solid at all and I wasn't happy and I was like feeling like you said before like trauma all the time I was in my flight or flight mode all the time um, so ironically, when people thought I was probably the happiest I should have ever been, I was actually maybe the saddest I was ever. Uh, and now it's almost flipping now. So, but then again, it's it's, it's all, it, when you step down from the ego level of trying to do anything to please what other people think, it doesn't matter because if you're yeah. happy, you're happy. If you're yeah. free, you're free. Like whether anyone sees it or not, whether anyone yeah. can understand it or not, it's like if you are truly in that place, then that's a gift of life for you. Like, mm. and you can only hope to, I guess, just be real about that with other people to influence them to find the same. Mm. Because that's it. You can't. You can only guide people back to themselves. That's the mm-hmm. thing. Where ayahuasca, any teaching, any gurus, it's like ultimately, I am just a signpost to point you back to you to yeah. find yourself. Because I can't give you anything apart from that, really. Mm. And that's what I get. That's the thing. I don't want to sell anything to anyone or anything because that's the truth. I always give. I'll give it all away for free straight away. Like, isn't like you, you are the universe. Like, I can't do anything for you. I can help you. You can give me money, and I'll give you these things, and it might trigger some realizations. I'll influence you and all that. But at the end of the day, it's you that has to find mm. this for yourself. And if you don't find it, I can't give it to you. Sort of thing. So it's very true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bless. Yeah. thank you thank you so no much worries. and uh look forward to where the rest of your journey takes you it sounds like yeah you've had such a good consolidation almost like is the word coming i think i'm going to grow into it for the next lifetime like yeah wow. I'm, I'm focusing on the name hampan joe at like the minute I... i'm putting music out through that so like instrumental music's coming through that name and then one rhythm is like the teaching platform that i've got online courses and i'm looking to eventually start doing drum workshops in my local area and maybe then start doing festivals and be doing like 50 to 100 people workshops at a time like helping everyone to come into unity through music and one rhythm i think will eventually be my full like lifelong um manifestation yeah. of like what I came here to do sort of thing Amazing. so sound was always my creative journey and now I'm developing evolving into these newer sort of more refined versions of where I'm at right now so yeah look out for that uh for the, the hand jewel that's where I'll be putting all my music and colored sound will be experimental stuff and then yeah one rhythm for all of the tuition stuff and yeah yeah it's just uh again just like fi- re- refining that process of knowing myself I think Mm. yeah and then giving it back I really I can't wait to just like help kids to understand music I've just applied for a job which I'll be doing like full-time um teaching primary school kids in um schools nine till five Monday to Friday school of rock taking a full band in and just jamming with kids and like I really do hope I get it I feel like it's the final link in the chain for me just to give back and to come back and to share my absolute passion and love of music which is so real for me and just to give it to the kids and that's what I love they're busking and stuff just inspiring them like you can do it whatever you want practice it do it you got it Mm. like it's yours you can take it but only you can give it to yourself no one will give it to you like start today let's Mm. start putting the time in I'll hold you I'll hold you in this process for the next three years and watch you develop and yeah I don't think there's anything better than that really that's what I've seen now for me like I'm gonna get so much more satisfaction and and um fulfillment and seeing other people f- have that freedom which mm-hmm. I've experienced and I still experience it noisily this weekend by jamming and expressing and like, I'm lucky to have that and life's hard but when I'm in those moments I'm free and it's just amazing and I want to help as many people find that as possible yeah that's the goal that's cool. yeah yeah and to yeah. connect with many people and have as much fun as possible that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> amazing yeah, so yeah. your links I'll put them at the bottom of the uh video as well to nice. find you and yeah i look forward to seeing you again around the fire <laughs> it won't be long yeah for sure yeah. <laughs> thank you so much no worries thanks for your time and uh good luck with all of what you're doing as well with the podcast and i'm sure that this is just going to continue to Lots. deepen the uh the pot of stew of consciousness and help people just like uh, get to know each other even deeper and it's a really good thing i love podcasts for this sort of reason just to just to tune into other people's life and where they're at and and get like the full spectrum of like wow that's that person just like raw. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah man I love 
yeah I love people's stories I love hearing and and mm. I feel like so much can like uh be sparked within each, yeah everyone who's listening tuning in you know yeah and it almost like fills so many fantasies of like oh I could have done that oh what if I did that and then you hear someone who's done that and you're like wow that's what would have happened if wow, I'd done that oh yeah it's like fulfilling those lives within that realization of they're doing it and it makes me happy to know you're doing that <laughs> oh, that's so cute <laughs> amazing Sweet. nice one all right thank you so much for your time catch you again yeah thank you for your time too <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode and to this podcast. We hope that you can gain many insights through the art of listening. If you haven't already, we would love it if you can follow us on YouTube, on Instagram, and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts if that feels right for you. We've also just launched our first online course, Awakening 101 a ninja's guide to navigating your spiritual awakening which is led by me and is offered via donation so if you feel called to that then please dive in it's available via our website thank you